your land. When it comes to your family land, remember to call the professionals at Security Title, just like you call Ray Gibson in the morning. Guam Regional Medical City. We bring the health care advances of the world directly to you. We are an acute care hospital that complements your needs with our robust outpatient specialty clinics. From preventative care to critical care, we strive for consistent excellence at GRMC. Our core philosophy is where patients are partners, which means we work as a team to make a healthier version of you. For more information about GRMC, visit us at grmc.gu. Every time I travel, there's something from home that I can't leave without. I take my Dokomo Pacific data to go to share my stories in Taiwan, check subway routes in Tokyo, be my food guide in Hong Kong, meet new friends in the Philippines, make updates in the States, find my way around Korea, and check out all the cool shows in Singapore. It's the data I have in all the places I love for only $10 a day. Data to go from Dokomo Pacific, better together. Half a day and good morning, Guam. News time here at The Point is 7 minutes past 8 a.m. this Thursday morning. I'm Kevin Kerrigan. Here's a look now at some of the top stories from the Guam Daily Post. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero says she will seek a total Guam exemption in an effort to lift the current restrictions on the H-2B visa program and relieve the shortage of skilled foreign workers on island that she said has already had a detrimental effect on Guam's economy. The H-2B crisis topping the list of issues raised by the governor in her speech to the Guam Chamber of Commerce at the Hilton yesterday. She called the decision by Homeland Security recently to remove the Philippines from the list of countries eligible to take part in the H-2B visa program first and foremost in everyone's mind. However, she noted that the rule change does does allow an exemption for workers needed for projects related to the military buildup. So our approach, she said, will be that all of the construction projects on island are tied to the military buildup. That's the case she said she'll make to Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen when she goes to Washington at the end of next month. Our case for a total Guam exemption is strong, said Leon Guerrero. We are gathering the evidence now and will make our case based on the numbers. The 35th Guam legislature held its first public hearing yesterday, and one of the bills heard was the or more bill that would enable the implementation of a tax increase on property improvements worth $1 million or more. Senator Joe San Augustine introduced the measure. Bill number four is a reintroduction of a bill former Senator Tom Atta proposed last November. It merely corrects the wording in the 2019 budget law by adding the words or more to allow the tax increase to take place. Acting BBMR Director Lester Carlson testified in favor of the measure, saying failure to pass it would result in a $9 million shortfall in the Territorial Education Facilities Fund. That would force seven GovGuam agencies to cut their budgets, with the biggest blow falling on the Guam Department of Education, which would have to cut spending by $4.5 million. One problem raised during the hearing is that the property tax bills have already been mailed out. If the or more bill becomes law, the affected property owners will now get another bill reflecting the higher tax rate. Carlson recommended the adoption of additional language to Bill 4 that would allow the tax increase to be retroactively enforceable. Senator San Augustine, who used to be a tax investigator, said the reissuance of the property tax can still happen. He said the governor, who is the tax commissioner, can authorize a rebilling. I know that for a fact, he said. We'll have more news after this. At Chili's, our burgers stack up with anyone's. Handcrafted to order, smashed to lock in flavor on a toasted brioche bun. Our burgers are all kinds of perfect. Choose from the Chili's Chili, the Mushroom Swiss, the Ultimate Bacon, or you know what? We dare you to take on the Boss Burger. Loaded with smoked brisket, rib meat, jalapeno cheddar sausage, and bacon. We may have really out ourselves. Our burgers are more than a handful, served with garlic dill pickles and fries. So hurry in today and enjoy our juicy, melty, yummy, handcrafted creations. Perfection between two buns. Chili's. More life happens here. Helen Keller once said, blindness separates us from things, but deafness separates us from people. 
At Ross Hearing Aids, it's their mission to keep you connected to the moments and the people that matter most in your life. Hearing aid technology has never been better, so schedule your complimentary hearing consultation today. Call Ross Hearing Aids, 637-HEAR, 637-4327. You should hear what you're missing. I love you, Daddy. How's your hearing? Ten minutes past 8 a.m. here at The Point. A study conducted by the University of Guam Regional Center for Public Policy has concluded that the perception of corruption on island has increased substantially in recent years. According to the study, about two-thirds of respondents believe corruption is a very serious problem on Guam. Political parties were viewed as the most corrupt, while religious, military, and nonprofit organizations were viewed as least corrupt. The Guam Corruption Perception Report is the first attempt to measure the perception of corruption. Its authors say the aim is to provide a benchmark for comparison with other countries over time. The results were announced at a news conference yesterday at the university. UOG professor of economics uh, Maria Ruane said the results are based on a survey of Guam residents that was conducted by the School of Business and Public Administration at UOG. The island's only medical examiner, Dr. Aurelio Espinola, has retired effective today and no replacement has been hired to replace him yet. It's unclear who will perform autopsies on island now. The Commission on Postmortem Examination was supposed to meet yesterday to decide what to do, but the meeting was canceled and no new meeting date has been announced. Payout for Dr. Espinola's retirement benefits has caused a budget shortfall in the medical examiner's budget. And that prompted pleas to the administration for help, which have not yet been answered. Dr. Espinola telling the Guam Daily Post earlier this week that he has been asked to remain on call until a replacement has been hired, but he said, I have to talk to my wife to see if I can still be on call after this week. For these stories and more, log on to postguam.com or... Pick up a copy of today's Guam Daily Post. Ray and Mike now with weather. Uh, partly sunny and breezy with a slight chance of light showers. Winds from the northeast up to about 25 miles an hour. Daytime highs expected to be near 88 degrees and overnight lows about 77 degrees. We'll put a little bit of that 25 mile an hour wind uh, against that and it will be downright nippy tonight. Sunset at 620. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 648. There's still a high surf advisory in effect and a high risk of rip currents through late Saturday night along north and east facing reefs. There's still a lousy idea to jump into the water and take a look at the uh, weather radar from the National Weather Service and see what uh, what this has to say about uh, wait a second all I got I got to make it so that we can see Guam in uh, in the picture there we go uh, so uh, so there's a National Weather Service version of the uh, of the radar imagery and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot by way of weather moving in right now no just the isolated stuff as it is and uh, that will continue for the next several days you know being here on Guam in the tropics always a chance that some of this wind could pick up a little bit of moisture and, you know, drag it over the island, and that just is that's the way things are here. Mm. Uh, but widespread precipitation not really expected because we got high pressure building in. You can see it here on the satellite. Looking quite impressive. Looks like we may have another shear line that might be pushing through uh, coming in from the northeast, but I can't promise that because it all looks like it's starting to retreat a bit as you get over to the to the west. You can see how some of it's moving this way, but then you go off to, a, to the northwest of us, and you can see how some of it's actually kind of peeling back the other way. At least that's what I can see here on the satellite. So at the very least, we'll have these nice fresh breezes for the next two or three days. And, Take uh, it. That should continue. Any yeah. opportunities for, for breezes and grill marks at the same time over the weekend. So if uh, if you were thinking, uh, if you've deprived yourself of, uh, of the beach recently, uh, this would be the weekend to unhook from that and, uh, and get some beach time in. 813, that's news and weather together here on The Point. Are you waiting too long for a home loan decision? Are you looking for a bank that understands your needs and can close your loan quickly at today's super low rates? Then come no further than Bank Pacific. Our home loan specialists are friends and neighbors from your community, and our decisions are made right here in Hagatnya. Bank Pacific, where we're open to closing your loan in a hurry. Bank Pacific, where others put branches, we place food. Equal housing lender, correct conditions apply. Viva Bank Pacific. Hey, hey, see if you can get my buddy Chris on the line. Talk about a karate thing that's going to be coming up here soon. 8.14 in the morning portions of the Ray Gibson Show brought to you uh, by the guys over at King's Restaurant. Decades worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Try it today in Tamuni or Harmon. Uh, and then we got the American President lines. They're shipping the future. Micronesia Renewable Energy. There's never been a better time to go solar. And Guam Regional Medical City, the first choice for all of your specialty care needs. The Coconut Wireless is back. 
The Ray Gibson Show. Call now, 888-TALK. That's 888-8255. Man, I love that. Just digging the music that we're playing these days. Uh, you know, it's uh, the start of, a, of another year of doing the show. And so Mike went through and kind of recut everything and, uh, and found different voices uh, to, to tell you basically what we've been telling you last year. But it's just a change. You know, it's like a, like a new season on television is, uh, is what we're shooting for here this morning. Blake Watson uh, stepping up to the uh, microphone here this morning to uh, be, begin the process of uh, pretending to talk about sports. Uh, and and I've, I've got a couple of sport things I might be able to share with the listeners. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, just, uh, you know, just... Uh, 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 hold on a second. we got to get the, the producer's attention. Woo! <laughs> hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. There we go. There, there you go. Look over here. There we go. Turn that thing on so I can hear Blake. I mean, I can hear him before, but I hear him much better now. I can hear the whiskers in the, in the well, conversation. Yeah. So, no, buddy of mine, um, who's that guy? Uh, um, Chris Bianchino sent me a thing. <laughs> And uh, and so he's 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 the buddy that takes care of all of the printing stuff that we do, mm -hmm. and uh, and so he sent me a deal. Said the World Karate Organization, Shinkyoku Shinkai Karate Guam, will Bless host you. a. <laughs> Two-day international training camp uh, and seminar so, uh, Friday the 15th at the Royal Orchid Hotel. Saturday, February 16th at the Outrigger Hotel. Special guest instructors for this event are WKO President and 5th World Open Karate Tournament Champion Shihan Master Kenji Midori and WKO Executive Director in Tokyo Bay Minato Branch Chief uh, Shihan Yasukazu Koi. This will be the third Karate seminar conducted by Shihan Midori in Guam. And they'll go through everything, the multiple training sessions focusing basics and fundamentals, your kata, or form, fighting drills, and strategies. This will also be a black belt preparation course for WKO students taking their black belt examination later in the year. Where's it at? Where's that? It's, it's uh, February 15 and 16. So 15th is at the Royal Orchid okay, Hotel. Okay, Royal Orchid. And, uh, and the 16th is going to be at the, uh, at the Outrigger. I, I, I don't know whether they're the same or different. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can find out when, uh, when we actually get my buddy on the, on the phone. It should be noted that the fetal position is not proper contact. It, it, no. I, you know, I, I, I generally don't think so. Oh, he's not available no, right now? Is that not. what he said? He just... Tomorrow. He'll talk about it tomorrow. Well, you know what? We'll need him tomorrow. Yeah. Program note, Blake's not going to uh, be here. Mm -hmm. You know, and it works out, too, because uh, I just got a note, uh, speaking of from home, that says that my uh, my daughter actually was held out of school today because she was sick. Oh. So it works out because, you know, she's got an appointment tomorrow. So yeah, that's just yeah, good yeah. timing. Okay, so, yeah, timing being everything. So so we have two yeah. babies in the family now, and uh -huh. one of them is sick, and the other one uh, needs to have a checkup at the same time, Because right? he's brand new, yeah, so you know, yeah, yeah. you know how it is. He's got to go once a month for, like, the first five, six months. Well, so, I don't know uh, what we're going to do about sports with Blake. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm sure we'll come. Out. I was going to say I'll call Renee and and have her come back in, but you know what? Uh, she's she's traveling right now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I saw a Facebook thing. She's uh, she's out. Yeah, people if, don't do that. Don't tell people that you're traveling uh, when when on the Facebook and the social medias because that's just a note to the bad guys that you're not home. So uh, just FYI, just, you may, might want to keep that uh, a secret. I've I'm out of town, but my <laughs> silent attack dog is still at home. <laughs> that's that's what you want to be able to type on uh, on these things. Anyway, so uh, so we got sports and and so we're not going to talk tomorrow. And I don't know if there's any any other uh, decent you know uh, Super Bowl related stuff that we could bring up anyway uh yeah uh so the super bowl i wanted to say it's uh we we, we decided right 9 30 or not that we decided but they've decided yeah they've decided Kick off around 9 30 um you know the prop bets come out the what the prop bets you know the, the fun bets the things that you can actually bet on on the super bowl oh, oh yeah heads or tails heads or tails yeah, like well, for the national anthem so i've actually got some uh, some of some of the ones that are on for this year. You got your coin toss, which mm -hmm. you've got a fifty percent chance of winning. Uh, the length of the national anthem over under one minute and fifty seconds. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you know you could bet another on fifty 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 uh, bet. Right. Uh, any player to kneel during the national anthem. Numbers or uh, doesn't say. Just or do say, you have to name them? I think maybe you just say whether they will or not. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, well, even, I'm, what are you? What are your thoughts on that? Will they? Won't they? Uh, this this, <clears throat> this particular Super Bowl seems um, to. Have, I mean, right, uh, including the halftime show mm -hmm. uh, is uh, is all awash in political correctness and social justice warriors using it as a platform for one thing or another. You know, uh, and I don't know, but I I can say that the Patriots. I don't think that they ever had that as a controversy, only because they're just they're a really 
tightly, you know, run team. Uh. So I don't think Belichick, you know, I don't think anybody really knelt anyway. Kneeling was a, that's a, that's a 2017 issue, man. This year it really wasn't. Yeah, an it issue. really wasn't. And, 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 and that's again, that's what I was going to say too, is I was also going to say is that it felt like, um, the Rams, like, you know, that they were so new either, you know, like they're either too veteran, you know, or they're, or they're all rookies and they weren't there the year before. So they don't really, you know, it's, really... it's not their controversy. Yeah, like, you know, they weren't the Eagles. They weren't the Niners. Mm. They weren't these teams who were known, you know, to have several people every game kneel or, you know, put up the fist or whatever. So uh, I don't think it'll be an issue. And because it is the Super Bowl, I don't think they'll even be shown if there is somebody kneeling. You nope. know, I don't think TV would do that. Uh, in game bets. Not if they want people to watch it all the right, way through. Yeah. <laughs> if in the uh, in the game bets, uh, let's see here. A mention of Bill Belichick and Sean McVay's age gap as McVay's 33, young enough to be uh, one of uh, Belichick's kids, who uh, a couple of them are older than him. Belichick is 66. Uh, let's see here. Any player throwing a football into the stands after a touchdown? You can bet on that. <laughs> Uh, Brady seen cursing during the live broadcast. You know, when things don't go his way, he's uh, known to get a little heated on the sidelines. I side hope line. I see a lot of that. I do, too, if you want them to, to lose like we do. Mm -hmm. uh, a streaker <laughs> during the game. Oh, and then, then, then you've got the side bet, Is it a boy or a girl. Right. Yeah, yeah, so you can say, yes, there will be a streaker. It will be a boy. You know, you know what I've noticed is I've noticed that there's less streakers in, n like, naturally controlled environments. Yeah. You know, like, streakers seem to be either in, like, extreme cold or outdoor baseball games mm. just in the boring, mundane days of summer, you know, in the middle of the night or whatever, or middle of the uh, when summer. It's nice. Right, but, yeah, nobody really streaks in a dome. I guess maybe it's too comfortable. Well, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's I, I don't know. I mean, just the idea that there's there's not far to go before somebody tackles you and arrests you. Mm -hmm. you so, Tackled on synthetic turf, right? Oh yes, yes. Okay, that's why times. they don't do they'll, they'll it. Leave them, they'll leave a mark, huh? Yeah. You know, there was one guy. There was one genius guy, and this is uh, we've deviated a little bit, but he, I think he streaked, or he didn't even streak. He just ran across the uh, Cincinnati Reds outfield from the left field line, mm -hmm. straight to center field, high five the center fielder, and then jumped the fence, jumped the back fence, ran up the upper deck, had a car waiting for him, cause smart, the, and then got away. So well, he got out of it. But like I said, that was a natural. I think that was in, uh, like I said, in Cincinnati. So yeah, I think that, yeah. you know, st towns like that, the, uh, the the field is actually on street level, you know, so, so you so can I've, get out of it. I've never easier. done it. Remind me to ask Jerry Roberts. He's going to be in the studio tomorrow for the anniversary show brought to you by Take Care. But uh, when, when he is in the studio tomorrow, we need to ask him about, uh, he had bet another old broadcasting buddy of mine, one of my first bosses, a guy named Les Englehart. Uh, they, he had this bet that uh, Les would not streak from one end of the old administration building into Ganya to the other end, and and so the the story is told that uh, that Les took the bet, got out of the car, butt naked, and ran down the length of it. And Jerry was supposed to pick him up in the car and and take him back to the radio station, but apparently there was. It was like something stuck in a way, and Jerry didn't get there in time <laughs> to get this. On purpose or yeah, what? Well, yeah. you know, it was, it was a crazy, heady 70s days of broadcasting. I, I couldn't tell you whether it was on purpose or not, but uh, would, would, you would you trust Jerry to pick you up at the end of, uh, at the end of uh, yeah. I don't know, I had, uh, so a I, couple of hundred yards there? I had, we had something like that happen to two of my buddies that uh, in our crew in, uh, in high school. One of them, uh, they, they were going to moon, the, uh, they were gonna moon the, mm -hmm. the, the line to get into the movies. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, just kind of drive by and moon. You just kind of cruise by the line, you know, moon, and then just keep going. Well, uh, <laughs> the guy driving just let my buddy do it, and then he parked right in front of the line, got out of the car, you know, locked it, and walked off over to to the store next to the movie. Yeah. So he just kind of left him standing. There I think I think I think we all have a uh, have a naked in public story. Uh, luckily, one, one way or the other, I'm I've sure all... that there's between all of us here, there's, <laughs> except Kevin. Kevin probably, Kevin has never ever been naked. He showers in that shirt. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm sure that Kevin doesn't have a naked in public story. But uh, but I there's there's one that stands out in my head. You know, since we're sharing and everything mm -hmm. uh it was once upon a time we had uh, the, the carnival was up in jigo at a place called the jigo amusement right. park legendary now uh -huh. jigo amusement park and so you'd get in a, you know, there was one what, we were all up there and i think it was my buddy ron had this big old bronco right and so we piled like 20 people up in the in the car we were goofing off and and this is 70 so we we're all drinking beer and uh and and so we, we get we're up in uh, in between Jigo and Dededo, but still far, far away, and a lot of traffic getting up to it because this is back in the old uh, you know two lane road days of the Marine Corps Drive up there. 
Anyways, and naturally, I had to relieve myself. So I said, open the door, and I will go to that telephone pole over there and <laughs> uh, and uh, relieve myself. And so I, I did. And uh, I opened the door. I forgot, though, that uh, that Ron was a ever-ready kind of guy. He was a Boy Scout kind of guy. And he had this massive deer hunting light in the car uh. and, uh, and shown that on me so that not only everybody in the Bronco could see what I was doing, everybody five or six cars up and five or six cars back could see what was uh, was going on. I got a new nickname that night, and I can't say it on the radio. But uh, yeah. we have tape of that incident, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Actual audio from yeah, that night. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think it survived <laughs> back in those days. Sometimes. Listen, there's there's it's pretty good that naked in public stories now, and I think the best ones uh, are because they are now, and there is probably photographic evidence, you know, with the proliferation of cell phones and uh, and things like that. A couple other Super Bowl notes that I've got for you: the Super Bowl numbers one. 1.3 billion, mm. which is uh, the number of chicken wings that will be eaten on Super Bowl Monday. 1.3 billion. So uh, divide that in two, and that will tell you how many actual chickens have died or or have had their, their wings amputated for just for the Super Bowl. Do you know an archaeologist dig down to our lair mm. some millions of years from now they're going to think the earth was inhabited by chicken <laughs> based on all of the all of the stuff that's out. So what an amazing business that is i mean just like i said divide that number by by two and it will give you the number of chickens that are going to 1.3 billion glad i'm right? not a chicken yeah, absolutely uh and uh, and the people over at walmart will be selling 2.6 million pounds or 246 miles of lunch meat will be sold just at the walmart's Man. Just there, 2.6 million pounds of uh, of cold cuts. You know that's what I miss. I miss uh, I miss the grocery stores with the with the deli counter and 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 them. Seems like they were they were more prevalent back back. A long I miss time ago. grocery stores where bread cost less than four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't they tell you that yesterday? Because you that's the second time I've heard you I make know, that he, remark. He and did. yesterday everybody said just buy the day old stuff. Oh, yeah, that's it's right. It's still that's too okay. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's still too. Make it yourself. Have you thought about that? I don't have an oven. You don't have an oven? No. No. no I get you a cast iron you know, skillet. In, uh, uh, My next-door neighbor does, but then he pays an enormous light bill every month, and so yeah. I was like, no, I don't want that. You can yeah, make, you a, make it, cornbread. Get yeah, one, of the, get on one of those skillet, solar yeah. gizmos. You know, go get one of those solar gizmos, you know, because, look, there's there's millions and millions, of, billions of people probably that don't have access uh, to electrified heat, and uh, and they, they can still make bread. They just they use the sun to do it, yeah. or they make a fire. Are you, are you allowed to have a fire in your apartment? Uh, once. <laughs> just that, just the one time, and then they kick you out after that, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, pick your favorite bread recipe. <laughs> the, the bread recipe that's going to be worth getting kicked out of the apartment. <laughs> Pumpernickel. Something like that. Yeah, There's yeah. a guy, what's his name? Jeff. Uh, go find Jeff over at the Fiesta Hotel. He's the boss of the fiesta, and that's kind of a hobby that he has: is making his own bread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. might want to. Well, he might actually have one of those solar oven recipes for you. Uh, maybe, or the next big typhoon, we'll all mm -hmm. be using solar ovens of one kind or another. Uh, and and that was all I had for interesting uh, football well, stuff. You know, uh, I got a couple more interesting football stuff. I did not know uh, until I before the sports report today that um, this is the seven, the number of Super Bowl rematches, including this one. Uh, I can run them down for you. The Patriots-Rams, I believe this is the second time that they've met. Other Super Bowl rematches, uh, these teams have played more than once in Super Bowls. Dolphins-Redskins. Yeah. Steelers-Cowboys. Uh, Niners-Bengals. Cowboys-Bills. Patriots-Giants. And again, Patriots-Eagles. So Patriots, one, two, three of the, uh, of the you know, like the, the rematch uh, retreads. And right, all yeah. of those quarterbacked, of course, in this era of Belichick and and Brady. And then I also saw this one, which was really cool. Um, just a little bit of the Super Bowl history. Number of previous Super Bowls played in Atlanta. Uh, both previous Super Bowls played in Atlanta were now at the defunct Georgia Dome, yeah. uh, which is my team. Mm -hmm. Won a Super Bowl there back in 93 when Dallas beat Buffalo handily 30 to 13. And then the second one was actually the last time the Rams won a Super Bowl uh, was in the 1999 season. Uh, the Rams won their Super Bowl at the Georgia Dome then. And uh, if you don't know, that's the uh, Steve McNair, Tennessee Titans mm -hmm. game where the last play he stretched out. And he was, yeah, like, a, Dyson, he was like a yard Dyson, short. Yeah, yeah Dyson, Dyson didn't get it to. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I was really happy about that. Well, yeah, because you're not a, you hate the Titans. Yeah, yeah. The, the I, I, to, me, to me, it was yeah. it was karma. It's well, like, yeah, you moved to Tennessee yeah. and you're one yard his short. Team, <laughs> his team pulled up stakes and left Houston 
and then became the Tennessee Titans, so I would hate them too. And then so. two years later, go to a Super Bowl. Yeah, but, and, and then, then two, that, but that happened. and then lose, and then lose. Yeah. So, and then uh, you know, karma. Yeah, karma. Karma got them in, in more ways than one. Oh, Fisher yeah. never did anything. Uh, mm-hmm. Their quarterback died. Yeah, yeah, McNair. He did. was killed by yes. his mistress. By his, yeah. Oh, that, don't have mistresses. Oh, they'll kill you. Mm-hmm. One but way yeah. or the other. Eight, yeah. eight, <laughs> 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 laughing about people getting killed by their mistresses. This is, this is a dark, dark day in the program. Yeah. Uh, t- currently 8.29 in the morning and almost, uh, almost 8.30, and that's uh, almost uh, about t- the rest of the time that we've got for you. Congratulations to the uh, to the first players uh, in the new double IG, double AG uh, d- beach volleyball up at uh, up at the place. I, I heard from one of the moms, and and she said her daughter was just absolutely enjoying it. So so that's that's nice to hear, and it looks like we've got this new sport that we'll be able to follow around and 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 more car line for the kids uh and today the last day to register for the uh, guam international marathon at the current rates also the last day to enter the guam international marathon while you can still get a customized bib yes it's it's a whole other level of souvenir and uh, and there are there if you go on the back of the running magazines or, or if you just uh, you know you can buy these mechanisms these gizmos mm-hmm. right that will hold all of your all of your medals oh yeah uh, uh, and and now they they're starting to make more of them that will hold your bib. So it's not just a commemorative. Hey, I ran the Boston Marathon mm-hmm. uh, the bib. It's the I won the I, I run the Boston Marathon and it had my name on it. Bib, right? So those oh. are those are the special what, ones that you want to say. What's the character limit? Uh, you know? ten, 10 letters. Ten letters. Okay. Yeah, ten, ten so letters. So like already gone, you can't do it. You got to, you almost like a license plate. You got to be very clever with your abbreviations. Exactly. And your, yeah, so your so I, there, there were some words that I wanted to use in, in Chamorro, but they wouldn't, I couldn't make them fit. So I just went with the standard R-A-Y-G-I-B-S-O-N. So I'm using, I'm using my name uh, mm-hmm. to customize the bib. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted it to be big damn it, but I don't, think it, I don't think I was inside the limits there. Anyway, nah. uh, and uh, and in terms of a uh, 5Ks, if you want to get ready for the uh, for the GIM, there is going to be a 5K. This is the one I'm going to be running at. Uh, it is going to be. Who do I want to say now? Because there's there's guys for which I'm their rabbit, and they're trying to beat me. So I maybe the I, hair. Yeah, i maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Well, I, I just do it for the for the publicity. Anyway, third annual uh, Mace Get Fit Family Run Walk 2K 5K at the Agate Mayor's Office. This is for uh, the uh, the students of Marshall Sablon Elementary School, home of the stars. Showtime five, go time six. Pre registration fee eight dollars for students, ten dollars for grown ups, thirty five bucks for a group of four, and twelve dollars for everybody on race day. First three hundred finish will receive a get fit shirt Ooh. nice dry fit does it say i, I don't one of those, know those one of those snazzy uh dry fit really nice if it's a dry fit please use small logos don't paint and don't paint too much on it because <laughs> otherwise it's like wearing plastic <laughs> when, <laughs> I, I, i've got i've got so many of these shirts you know from people and it's they, they've got these huge logos and big words on the front of it yeah. and logos on the on the back of it and then when you put the thing on you realize your skin isn't breathing because you're like i said essentially wearing the plastic ink, i, I the have vinyl. shirts like that where you can feel the logo on the outside of the shirt just no. kind of weighing down on you a little yep, bit yep. Uh, contact the school five six five two two three eight. Uh, if you are interested, and I'll see you on uh, on race day. There is another one that's going on, I believe, on Teedson, and I'll get details on that for tomorrow. I'm excited, uh, so I won't be here tomorrow for the uh, happy anniversary big one year show. But congrats to everybody all around. Well, that's you too. Yeah, me too, and Kevin and Mike and. Bob and Daryl and you and Joe all in the afternoon. And also, I'm excited because we do get one more show before the Super Bowl. We'll be here Monday morning. And, uh, That's think, right. So we'll be here actually right before, right? Like, like 30 minutes before kickoff or whatever. We'll, uh, we'll get to talk. So. Whatever time Kevin says. Yeah, so I'm excited. Isn't it a holiday on Monday? Ooh. <laughs> For some, well, now, you know, now For we some. got, dude, we got a, a woman, <laughs> we got a woman governor and and a, a women led legislature. What are you suppose the chances of getting a, a you know, a, just a day off on? Uh, on are you on, insinuating that football <laughs> is just a man's sport, right? I didn't. I do that yesterday. I don't know. I'm just asking. If I did right because she, Shelly's looking for some place to go where she's not going to get scowled at when when she walks in, and and the answer is well, did, then don't walk in. You know, frankly, we put all of the women in charge in this last election. <laughs> yeah. Should you be running the government or something? What are you doing here? Why aren't you That's working? Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you working? <laughs> this, this, we're just here drinking beer and having frivolity and, and fun. But you guys are like, oh, we want to run the government. Oh, girls run things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, go run it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Leave us alone with our beer and our cigars. And football and wings. 834. They'll be waiting for me outside. I'm going to have to go to <laughs> you know, the... it's Jesus Day. El... <laughs> They're going to take me to the Elizabeth Warren and uh, the mental retraining camp. That's where all of us boys are going to end up anyway. It's 8... 835. Okay, that's all the time. we got headlines with Kevin Kerrigan after these. Introducing Exchanged, Guam's first online and mobile remittance to the Philippines. Exchanged is the easiest and fastest way to send money to your family and friends anywhere in the Philippines. Download the Exchanged app or visit their website, exchange.me. Sign up, remit, and get a chance to win a trip for two to Manila. Deluxe accommodations at the Belmont Hotel at Resorts World Manila. So sign up and remit now at Exchange. Promo ends March 2nd, 2019. Conditions apply. Also available at Exchange Dollar to Remit Promo. Visit exchange.me for details. That's right. That's right. I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to be the inaugural patient for the uh, Elizabeth Warren, Susan B. Anthony, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg male toxicity uh, re-education camp. That's that's going to be my claim to fame in the future. It's 835. We better get me out of this. Kevin Kerrigan with headlines from the Guam Daily Post. Go. Half a day and good morning, Guam. In the headlines from the Daily Post this morning, the Legislature's Appropriations Committee hearing testimony yesterday on Senator Regine Bisco Lee's Bill No. 1, which would increase the number of small businesses eligible for an exemption from the business privilege tax by raising the exemption from 40000 now to 50000 as long as the business's total income does not exceed 250000 Gita Acting Administrator Melanie Mendiola cautioning that the change might violate current bond covenants that rely on the BBT. The breach of this covenant could lead to default, said Mendiola, which would have a broad financial impact on the government, she said. Mendiola said she would favor passage of the bill if language was added to reassure the bondholders that the revenue stream would not be interrupted. Senator Tulahi pointing out that the fiscal note on the bill projected a $1.3 million loss in revenue for the GovGuam General Fund as a result of the expansion of the BBT exemption. However, Mendiola said that raising the exemption could have an economic multiplier effect that would lead to job creation and stimulate revenue in other areas. The Civil Service Commission has ruled that the election-related allegations against teacher Andre Bynum are moot because he has resigned from the Guam Department of Education. Bynum, a former Simon Sanchez high school teacher, was chairman of the Political Action Committee Guamanians for Fair Government. Troy Torres filed the complaint against him back in September. Torres is the former communications director in the Calvo administration and the former campaign manager for former Senator Dennis Rodriguez's failed gubernatorial campaign. Torres said that Bainham had violated the Mini Hatch Act, which forbids classified employees in GovGuam from organizing political campaigns and raising funds for political candidates. Guamanians for Fair Government was a political action committee that spearheaded the write-in campaign for the gubernatorial team of former Senator Frank Huggins Jr. and Alicia Limtiaco. During Tuesday's hearing before the Civil Service Commission, Guam DOE officials confirmed that Bainham had resigned at effective January 25th. As a result, the Civil Service Personnel Management Director, Roland Fayeron, said the investigation is now moot. A man charged with shooting a teenager in Agate in 2016 entered a plea of no contest in Superior Court yesterday, 24-year-old Calvin Jesus Anderson pleaded no contest to charges of aggravated assault and a special allegation of possession and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. As part of his plea deal, Anderson agreed to help GovGuam find the gun he used in the shooting. According to the court documents, two years ago, Anderson shortchanged a group of teenagers after buying alcohol for them. He then rode past the group when they were outside a home on Santa Cruz Street in Agate and shot and injured Sammy Ketty, that according to the plea agreement. Ketty was shot in the hip, underwent surgery, hospitalized for two weeks. He told police Anderson fired four to seven times at him. Sentencing for Anderson has now been set for May 1st. He faces a possible term in prison of up to 25 years. 
For these stories and more, log on to postguam.com or pick up a copy of today's Guam Daily Post. Mm -hmm. uh, I connect time here, 838. And, and so yesterday, the first uh, public hearing held by the 35th Guam Legislature, uh, I, I know that they've got another one for next Thursday. Uh, on uh, and it, but it doesn't look like they're going to be entertaining any bills. Are you aware of any other public hearings that uh, that have been set by any other members of the committees? Not right now. And do we have any idea of when their first session might be at this time? Um, I heard uh, the uh, speaker Tina Munu Barnes say it may not be until March. Huh? <laughs> what? It's, with all of the stuff that they've got in front of them, they got thirty bills that uh, that, uh, and only a couple now have had hearings. Got a lot of confirmations. A lot to get of confirmations. Through, yeah, and a lot of bills to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, 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 first session, they'll still be doing other things, as yeah. you say. All right, uh, gotcha. Eight thirty nine in the morning. Eight 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 two five five eight 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 T A L K. Eight 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 eighty eight eighty eight is the number for I Connect. Eight thirty nine is I Connect time. Swing by and I Connect today and learn about the great packages, plans, and features they've got for your telecommunications needs in two thousand nineteen. Push to talk mobile, even internet with I Connect. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for our all-new Ultimate Cheesy Garlic Bread. How would you like it? Uh, I'll take a skeptical grandma. Set in her ways? Eh, a smidge. Grandma, try this Ultimate Meatball Marinara made with Ultimate Cheesy Garlic Bread. Melted mozzarella, Parmesan, garlic butter spread. It's just like yours. Like mine? My grandmother's recipe? Try it. Mmm. You know, my grandmother's cheesy garlic bread was never all that. Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. <laughs> In 20 minutes, it'll be 9 o'clock in the morning looking at traffic patterns right now. Everything is back to normal. You're going to see some uh, some buildup of traffic at uh, the major intersections, uh, but I don't see anything that is uh, is slow today, uh, at least right now. That might change. I mean, anybody get uh, stuck in the traffic yesterday? It was uh, crazy traffic, Route 8. Also hearing about crazy traffic on uh, on Marine Corps Drive. Somebody said it was like everybody got paid and left. Right in the middle of the afternoon. Okay, I got my paycheck. Let's get out of here. Let's boogie. Is it Friday yet? Sure felt like that on the roads, huh? 19 away from the top of the hour. That's right now. Traffic here on The Point. Cheers to 80 years. It's our 80th anniversary, and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and one round-trip flyaway for two to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavill's Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. Non-Cavill's customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit cavills.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavill's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Oh, and we got to boogie on now. Let me see what have I got on the Facebook Live. We did have a minor interruption in service on the Facebook Live, but it looks like everybody's come back. I see Tommy's there and uh, and Lady D, uh, Commissioner Gamboa, and Rico Blancaflor, Renee Lau, uh, Juan Flores, former uh, superintendent of the Department of Education, Cody James, uh, one of the boss jocks of, uh, of air traffic control here on Guam. And Cody, we are going to get uh, connected so you can teach me about how it is that they taught you uh, to help land planes. Juanita Machi and Flo Cruz, Ken LG, and Tommy White. Uh, who just recently came to Guam and absolutely loves the island. Already plugged in with a lot of great members of the community and uh, love seeing that. Cat, uh, Cat Phillips Uggen, uh, Matkus Mendiola, uh, and Lynn Vince Borja Polino, Vicente Beneventi. Uh, and then the last thing that you might find on, uh, on the Points Facebook Live is a link. It is a clickable link that uh, that will take you to a report now that has been generated by uh, by members of the University of Guam community, led by Dr. Claire Ruane on uh, on corruption on Guam. And uh, Doc joins me now. Good morning. Good morning, Ray. How are you this morning? You know, I, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm absolutely terrific. Uh, we're on the eve of uh, of the anniversary show, brought to you by Take Care, and uh, and really excited about uh, you know the prospect of uh, of having rejoined the talk radio world a year ago, and it's uh, it's it's been fun. It's been it's been. This is your first year anniversary already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it went. It, Congrats. It went by pretty quick too. Well, I mean, a lot of lot of issues that, uh, that that we were already familiar with that I was already familiar with because uh, they were the same th same things that I was chewing on when I was at K57. Uh, but there are some new things, and and we're in an interesting new place 
in the, in the history of Guam now with a woman governor, women-led uh, legislature, women-run uh, court system. Uh, as, as I've told people, in fact, I might have told you, look, if, if we can't get our problem solved right now, we might as, uh, might as well mail back the Organic Act. <laughs> if we can't get our act together now with so much uh, harmony of interest, if you will, uh, then, then maybe we're not prepared for self-governments. Well, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to improve things right now. And, uh, you know, maybe it's the, the womenness of the leadership that we have. But, I mean, I think it's just uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, that's what we were highlighting with our report that, um, you know, Guam is any place. And I, I, just, heard, uh, um, I just heard earlier that um, one of your callers was saying, you know, corruption is everywhere. And, and, and it's true. Any place, uh, most places are never at the top or the bottom, and that's where Guam is. Guam is always in the middle, which is kind of a nice place to be. Uh, there's room for improvement. We could certainly strive to be better. And, of course, you know, we're not as bad as the others that are on the bottom list. So it's, it's always, it takes comfort for me yes. when, when we're in the middle. But, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 you, give you, you give yourself a pat, as we say. Sometimes it feels like we're the worst. We're not. But uh, we could do better. And I always look forward to that opportunity. So that's what we're trying to measure in here. And, you know, when we, when we produce this report, we certainly don't want to say, you know, it's the worst. We have no hope. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's n far from the truth. In fact, if you go, uh, I know you like the executive uh, summary, but in the appendix, appendix two is where we put Guam in the context of a hundred other, 107 other countries, including the U.S. And you'll see that in some places, actually, Guam fared better than other countries. So again, we don't, we also don't want to be complacent, thinking like, yay, you know, we're we're, we're doing well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, we we should never be happy where we're at. I think there's uh, just to strive to to improve every day. I listen to uh, Jerry Roberts all the time, do something good every day. Why not? And so I'd like to set that up and, you know, the theme of, of this report in that context. Well, and and I, I appreciate that. Sometimes we tend to get down on ourselves around here. And, you know, I got a, I got a flash a second ago on our WhatsApp, somebody saying well, they had to do a survey to find out what the uh, perceptions of corruption on Guam were. Heck, they could have just asked a couple of point listeners. Heck, they could have asked a couple of point hosts, as a matter of fact. Uh, I, I believe that there is corruption, uh, and, and I think it's the worst kind of corruption. I think there's the, the, some of the corruption that I'm aware of is like corruption in plain sight. You know, it's a hiding in plain sight. Uh, and and almost a kind of snubbing our nose at at some of the things that, that that go on around here, and and I don't know. And I think there's a lot of people that say, well, it's not really corruption as much as uh, there's incompetence around here. We tend to sweep things under the rug and say, well, it's incompetence. And I'm going, no. I, and, and then don't hold anybody accountable. And I don't know that that is part of a definition of corruption. And maybe, maybe Doc, let's start there. How how do you, for the purposes of this survey, how do we define corruption? Okay, and that, that came up a lot at yesterday's press conference. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to invent things, so I always like to follow uh, some, uh, some organization that's already established and quite reputable. I do check their policies. I do check their board membership. Uh, I want to make sure that, you know, one country isn't running this organization. And so I uh, trace back the, the study was formatted after Transparency International. And, uh, you know, this is uh, the corruption watchdog internationally, much like the Heritage Foundation is the one that watches democracy around the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I borrowed their definition. Uh, you know, I don't want something very specific to any economies I'm studying, in this case, of course, Guam. So their definition is uh, corruption is, uh, and I want to read this correctly, and I, we actually provided this definition in the survey because uh, when we're asking people about their perception, we want to know what we're talking about. So corruption is the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. And that's the definition. So we gave a definition of that. Uh, can you and repeat we, that? Abuse is what? Uh, abuse of entrusted power. So okay. you put people in positions of power, and they will use that to gain privately from, from being that position. And then we also give definition of grand corruption uh, acts committed at high levels of government that distort policies. So even inefficient, you know, policies that lead to inefficiency really is corruption. I mean, I'm, so this is how I'm reading this. Mm -hmm. And again, people would read this different way. And, you know, as an economist, I always pay for it. I always pay attention to inefficiency or, you know, we have limited resources. We have limited time. You always have to really, really get the maximum that you could get uh, out of that. So efficiency is important. And obviously we want to say, do it as ethically as you can, or in, in general, do it ethically. 
So grand corruption and then petty corruption uh, refers to everyday abuse of entrusted power by low- and middle-level public officials and their interactions with ordinary citizens and so on. And then there's political corruption, Mm -hmm. which kind of crosses over uh, grand uh, grand corruption because it's political corruption is the manipulation of policies, institutions, and rules of procedure in the allocation of resources uh, and financing by political decision makers uh, who abuse their position to sustain their power and status and wealth. And then we have a definition for transparency that we... I I can think of a headline for almost every single one of those definitions. I I know, and that was the tricky part when we were doing the survey because, you know, uh, this is the fun thing about being a social scientist. You're studying people, so it's not like an experiment in a vacuum Mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, everything's controlled and then you, you, you put in a stimulus and then you watch the reaction. So, but... Uh, we were we were attuned to that. So when we were doing the survey, as soon as we announced it, in fact, there's uh, chart one that talked about there were four reports that came out during the time we were doing this, yeah. and a survey was conducted uh, between October the 8th to November the 18th of 2015. So uh, the results should all be past tense. Um, uh, but uh, when we were doing this, we tracked, you know, so uh, it was available online and in, in paper. And then we were tracking the responses or even attempts. Some attempts were not, some attempts to take the survey were not completed. And then as the news came out in the headlines, we wanted to make sure, you know, did people suddenly want to respond to the, to the survey? And if they did so, you know, we want to make sure that, of course, the response would be a bit exaggerated. Yeah, yeah. So we're measuring all these things. The other thing that uh, sometimes people might forget when, and you know, sometimes polling is great, but, and it's convenient and very interesting, but when you're doing a sample, uh, the sample needs, you know, so we're based on a sample of 285 responses. It needs to represent, it needs to reflect the population, a uh, uh, population of age 18 and older, mm-hmm. and our, uh, uh, our respondents were residing on Guam. Those were, uh, that was the, the target group. So uh, we were careful to check, you know, the age group and the income group, education levels, even uh, the village of residences and so on. So we, you know, I, I know this is the exciting part, but you got to check all these technical stuff. Oh, yeah, well, and, and I'm glad that, that you followed, you know, the, the, some of the, the standards by which you, you can put together something where your report is meaningful. Uh, and, and we jump back into the executive summary. There's a couple of points there uh, that, that stood out at me almost immediately is that political okay. parties were viewed as the most corrupt. Uh, 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 all I could say is, uh, yes, that's what we found uh, from the 285 respondents. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know why they, they say that. Uh, I, you know, uh, so I'm sorry, it's, it's not the answer they're looking for. I, I don't know. Uh, that is the perception. Just of, a, a mistrust of, uh, of the powers that be in the Republican and the, and the Democratic Party. And, and it is possible that people like Andre Bainham and Ken Leon Guerrero and Daryl Taggarty and others uh, over the course of, uh, of the last couple of years uh, maybe have, uh, have shown some light in uh, in inefficiencies or, or maybe just policies and practices of the political parties uh, that people might view as corrupt? The only thing is I think the timing might be a bit off. Uh, you know, a lot of these things I remember a little bit more recently for the recent election. Yes. And, you know, the respondents were in 2015. However, this is why you want to do this again in 2020. You know, that, that is our plan to do it five years later. Uh, Transparency International, uh, their cycle seems to be about four-year cycle. And that's okay. We don't have to follow that completely. But, you know, uh, but uh, uh, so it's interesting. Some of the results, again, reflect that this was three years ago, Mm -hmm. because one of the other results that we found, speaking of the least corrupt, is, uh, as you saw, the military and religious bodies. And I don't think we'll see that. Uh, well, not in, the, in, in the next iteration in the next, of, uh, of in this. In the next cycle. So, so the timing is important. And that became kind of an issue. It's like, you know, why did you do this three years ago and you're just releasing this report? And was there a big strategy, a conspiracy of some kind in terms of timing? And actually, it's not. It's, um, you know, I did the survey. I've thought about this topic as mm-hmm. an economist from a long time ago. And uh, I hate to say this on the air, but I will. You know, I grew up in the Philippines, and my family had a business, and we were subjected to some corruption. Oh, so I, I know of, people that live here that <laughs> moved there. They're in a lock, stock, barrel business, moved it to Guam because uh, they they could not rely on being treated fairly by the government and the agencies uh, in the Philippines because they knew that, you know, you build in money for the bribe, right? 
and uh, and I uh, when we were running, uh, uh, we my family was a large transportation company. We had 35 a fleet of 35 buses that served the commercial to the financial district of Makati at the time. Mm. And uh, my grandfather had to divest half of the fleet uh, after martial law of 1972. And then by the time I finished my PhD, I actually went back and I took over my mom's share of the business, which were three buses. I had employees, uh, 10 employees under me, uh, uh, mechanics and inspectors, uh, drivers and conductors that issued the tickets. And 15% of my revenue had to go into, I hate to say it, so I'm admitting I'm, mm-hmm. I was engaged in bribery because, you know, the cops, uh, every Monday they expect some payment from us. Otherwise, we can't line up in this, like, a bus stop and we get shooed away. So you line up there and you fill up with passengers and then you take them to places, right, and use up gas and so on. Well, if you don't do that, then you can't line up there and then you're running your bus kind of empty and just picking up passengers. Yeah, so you're, 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 uh, you're, the bribes were a part of the fixed cost of doing business. Unfortunately, that became the reality. And so, so I'm very, you know, I've lived the situation of corruption, and I realize it's everywhere and at different levels. But it's also something I feel very strongly about. Part of it is a little bit more professional. Um, you know, I wanted to cross over to our master's in public administration program, mm. and, uh, you know, I wanted to find a topic that links economics with public administration. And this topic came up. So, you know, so that started my research in, more in 2014. We gathered the data in 15. But I wanted to tell you why the, it took three years to write the report. Uh, as you know, I was sick for about two years. Yeah. I was trying to get better. So, so, so there's no, you know, it's not, it's not a timing of, you know, why didn't you read Well, then, yeah, it, so if anybody yeah. looks at it and says, oh, this is all about the Calvo administration, no, it's not. I mean, there were other things that were taking place. I'm, I'm interested, though, when we're talking about different, uh, different organizations or, or different, uh, uh, different uh, entities here that uh, that were viewed as corrupt or not corrupt. You've got uh, we've got obviously the political parties, religious, military institution, nonprofit organizations. Did anybody look at academia? Did, has has uh, that entity been studied in terms of corruption? No, actually, that was one of the was uh, it? That was one of the institutions. Uh, yes, and uh, and it's you know so it, let me see. I, I know it's one of the institutions. Um, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I was just wondering if it was in yeah. there because it, it wasn't mentioned in the executive summary. Now, now this oh, is sorry, Ray. Just about religious bodies, fourth from the bottom, education system. Okay, I'll look at. I'll look into that. People prefer yeah. less risky actions against corruption, and this uh, this is the other yeah. takeaway. Uh, and 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 I, I suppose that you know there there are some people that will turn the turn away from corruption and turn a blind eye towards it uh, because they're worried about retaliation. Yes. For blowing yeah. a whistle. I, I agree. Most people would feel that way. And then economists like me, there is a theory of free rider, which is, you know, such a common concept. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you, if I think you're going to report it, uh, why should I stick my neck out and report? I'll just wait for you to report it. And then all of us are waiting for each other. To, you know, no, it's very risky to do so. And, you know, it's a small community as well. Uh, retaliation comes in different forms. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I have to admit, I, uh, even to publish this report, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it means in terms of, I don't want to hype it, but my personal safety, I mean, is it, is it an issue that we've written this report? Um, the academic and me, the researcher and me said that, you know, uh, three years ago we promised to do the survey. Uh, we have 285, actually 461 people that looked at it and attempted the survey. And we promised we were going to release this report for them. I mean, what was the point of gathering their data? Yeah. If it's, you know, it's, so, so I have. My team. Uh, well, I mean, you're, you're not you're not the U.S. attorney. You're not the attorney general. You're, you're and you're not making accusations against any of these institutions or the people that run them. You're reporting on the perception of the yeah. community as, as to whether Guam is corrupt or not. And according to the results of this survey, people view corruption as a serious problem here. Yes, and thank you. Well said, Ray. Thank you. I need to have you as co-author next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just—I don't want you to be. Uh, it's not like you're blowing a whistle on anything. I think one of the things uh, that we talk about here is that there are people that prefer less risky action. That is, let somebody else take care of it, or let's prevent it in the first place. Which is the one of the last findings here uh, of yeah. uh, of the report is we need more transparency. Uh, they we need to enforce accountability in uh, in the institutions that we have here. Yes. 
And, uh, in fact, um, if you look at, uh, in terms of the other feedback, there's Appendix 1 you'd appreciate because we did ask people uh, to, to have a write-in. You know, it's almost like a ballot, to have a write-in. And we asked them, what other actions would you recommend? And so I gathered those comments, and I actually uh, included them in that appendix in verbatim form, so mm-hmm. with all the typos, with all the uh, grammatical errors and so on. So this is the pulse of the island. We did try to make sure that this reflects the entire population, 18, uh, you know, age 18 and older, living on Guam in 2015, okay? So, um, so transparency is important. Uh, what's my role uh, as a professor? Well, I know I'm very strict on academic honesty. I developed that. I tried to instill that on my students. We tried to instill that as parents mm-hmm. raising our children. So, uh, you know, first day of the class, I spend an hour going over what is, you know, lightly called a course syllabus. I call it a contract. This is my contract with my students. And one of the things is academic honesty. And I tell them if you're ever dishonest in this class and there are different forms, you cheated on the exam, you plagiarized this and that, I will fail you in a heartbeat. You, you fail the class right away. You have to be you have to be held accountable for your actions, uh, even even in school. I gotta run. I got the news coming up here, but I, I really really appreciate you joining me on the program for this. I mean, it's a, I think it's an important uh, piece of research that uh, that you've conducted if for no other reason to to create some kind of a baseline and and we'll look at it again in a couple of years and see uh, if uh, if this new administration, this new time that we're in right now uh, changes people's perception. And we always hope that that would be the case. We just want to get better all the time. So thank you, Ray, for having me, and enjoy this day. It's a wonderful day. It's, a, it's certainly starting out that way. 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll see you soon, Doc. Uh, radio station is KUSG. I got you. My name is Ray Gibson. Coming up next hour, General Agagi is going to be in the program. What a delight that's going to be. Stick around, Brown. The cold turning deadly. I'm Lisa Lacerra, Fox News. Extreme weather in the Midwest and Plains claiming at least eight lives and snow squalls in the Northeast causing chain reaction crashes. Fox's Steve Rappaport has more live. The deep freeze is so bad that temperatures in the region are lower than in parts of Antarctica. In Minneapolis, today's high hit a balmy 15 degrees below zero. It's like hard to take a breath in. It's affecting my lungs a little bit. Governors in three states declaring emergencies, hundreds of schools canceling classes. Purdue University President Mitch Daniels. The real uh, danger we thought to students was uh, protracted periods moving around outside. Students can't avoid that. Officials in several cities are focused on protecting the homeless and other vulnerable people from the wicked elements. Lisa? Steve, the first day of talks for a bipartisan group of lawmakers as they try to come up with a plan for border security. Fox's Jared Halpern live on Capitol Hill. 17 lawmakers, Republicans and Democrats in the House and the Senate are on the clock to find common ground on border security funding. Smart border security is not overly reliant on physical barriers. House Appropriations Committee Chairwoman Nita Lowy argues physical barriers are not cost-effective compared with technology upgrades, but top Senate appropriator Republican Richard Shelby says a solution must be comprehensive, and that includes barriers. It is a common sense, I believe, all of the above solution to a problem. And President Trump, before negotiators met, warned if they aren't considering a wall, they're wasting their time, Lisa. Jared, a bipartisan group of senators say they will urge European countries to recognize Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido as that country's interim president. The European Union's foreign policy chief has said that if disputed President Nicolas Maduro doesn't announce a new presidential election in the next few days, the EU will take further actions. This is Fox News. There's a reason every day a Guam homeowner is getting a solar system installed by Micronesia Renewable Energy. It's because MRE is the most trusted name in solar. With more solar energy solutions than any other solar company on island, homeowners have a choice to go solar for zero money down or take the path to ownership. Whichever way, it keeps our skies blue and your pockets green. And with the most experienced solar technicians and an energy production guarantee, there are no worries. Call 632-2613 for a free consultation. MRE, the smarter choice. Every time I travel, there's something from home that I can't leave without. I take my Dogomo Pacific data to go to share my stories in Taiwan, check subway routes in Tokyo, be my food guide in Hong Kong, meet new friends in the Philippines, make updates in the States, find my way around Korea, and check out all the cool shows in Singapore. It's the data I have in all the places I love for only $10 a day. 
Data to go from Docomo Pacific. Better together. Florida police and the FBI discover an underground tunnel that leads right to a bank branch. It would be bank heist gone bust discovered before completion and before any cash had been stolen. In fact, whomever or whoever has been digging this tunnel had yet to make it all the way underneath the street into the bank. This is very much an active scene. The FBI is right there on the scene right now, as well as local authorities with a backhoe and a bulldozer currently digging that tunnel up. The entrance of the tunnel is hidden in a cluster. Of trees in the grass, which then goes underneath the two lane Flamingo Road, on the other side of which is the Chase Bank. Fox says Phil Keating, Google says it's disabled an iPhone app that it paid some users to install to study their digital habits following a similar move by Facebook late yesterday. Security will be tight for Sunday's Super Bowl. NFL security chief Kathy Lanier says safety for the Patriots Rams game is not at risk. Even through the federal shutdown, we never missed a beat. More than 65 agencies make up the security team, and while they won't be specific about tactics, Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shield said you'll see plenty of officers and... We also are relying heavily on technology, and everyone that has come to the table has brought some shape or form of that for us to leverage. Atlanta is hosting its third Super Bowl, but the first in the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Grinnell Scott, Fox News. Don't let me die. The Beatles farewell documentary Let It Be getting a reinvention. Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson has announced he's making a new film out of about 55 hours of footage shot in January 1969 that's never been seen by the public. The original movie came out in 1970 soon after the Beatles broke up. No release date is set. There's also a plan to remaster the original film. I'm Lisa Lacerra. This is Fox News. Guam Regional Medical City. We bring the healthcare advances of the world directly to you. We are an acute care hospital that complements your needs with our robust outpatient specialty clinics. From preventative care to critical care, we strive for consistent excellence at GRMC. Our core philosophy is where patients are partners, which means we work as a team to make a healthier version of you. For more information about GRMC, visit us at grmc.gu. It's uh, 5 after 9 o'clock in the morning. The Ray Gibson Show and uh, portions of which brought to you by my friends over at King's uh, decades worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they're really good at it. And we want you to go and eat there uh, today. Portions of the program also brought to you by Guam Regional Medical City, the first choice for your specialty care and needs. Micronesia Renewable Energy, never been a better time to go solar. And, of course, the guys over at, uh, at uh, American President Lines, where they're shipping the future. Security Title is honored to sponsor Ray Gibson on The Point. In 2019, we resolved to continue our mission of protecting and ensuring the land and homes of our beautiful island. Additionally, Additionally, we resolve to maintain our vital connection to our families and our community. Protehi Itanomo, protect your land. When it comes to your family land, remember to call the professionals at Security Title, just like you call Ray Gibson in the morning. Hey, uh, how much are you spending on uh, on your insurance policies these days? You know, probably uh, the answer is probably going to be, "Wow, too much, right?" Can I? Uh, do you know a way I can get a break? The answer is yes. Call Nanbo Insurance. They've got a thing called the Bundle Up Plan, and depending on what it is that you're trying to insure, all the things that uh, that you want to take care of, you might be able to save up to fifty percent on your insurance bill for 2019. Start off with a phone call: 477-9754, 477-9754 at Nanbo Insurance. <laughs> News to fill your mind. Talk to get it out. The Ray Gibson Show. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, and uh, and here it is, uh, seven after nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, and uh, you know just since the election and uh, and since the uh, inaugurations and everything, it just seems to me that there have been so many uh, so many headline worthy moments that uh, that we have had around here. Uh, and the other day, I was uh, was looking at something, and they said, "Hey, guess who's going to be the new tag over at the uh, at the guard?" And I said, "Ooh," and they said, "Esther." So now it's General Esther Agagi, and congratulations. Well, thank you, Ray. Uh I'm I'm so delighted to be here, and uh, thank you for the invitation to to join you on this wonderful program. Sometimes I listen, and I get so jealous because it seems like you have fun all the time. Oh, oh that's my deal. That's my deal. It's a, if I don't want to do this job unless I can have fun, you know. And 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 I'm sure the same thing it can be said uh, about these uh, high level positions that you've got in uh, in the Guam National Guard. 
well, you know, a job is a job. Yeah. Uh, but if you enjoy your job, it doesn't become work. I, well, I don't think they give general positions to people that don't like what they're doing. You know, otherwise it's like, oh, here comes General Sourpuss again. Oh, no, not in this case. Yeah, not I, in this case. It, it, it's, it's, I'm just absolutely delighted to be a part of the a military. And mm-hmm. the Guam National Guard has actually added to the value of my outlook on life. We'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about that because it's okay. not it's not just the job and and you know there's a, it, at the general level I think there's a 24/7 uh, deal that you, you kind of live in it so it does become kind of its own lifestyle you find yourself surrounded uh, by by other people in uniform and then with you know as I say the harmony of interest. Uh, Major Joe Bloss is, uh, is in the day, studio. Good morning. Good, good to have you and thanks for setting things up with the, with the general. Oh, idea. absolutely. Don't know how much time we're going to have this morning. Usually we go until uh, till I stop having fun. Uh, uh, but as she just said, you know, Ray has fun all the time. So let me bring things back. So so how did you find out that uh, that uh, Governor Leon Guerrero had her eye on you to become the next tag? So I, you know, I was under consideration for mm-hmm. a while. And uh, so the vetting process had to begin because, you know, you just you, you have to be very selective. You have to make sure that uh, the candidate you're looking at is going to meet uh, intent, you know, the, the intent of the governor, of course, and carry on the mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and as you may know, you know, the, the Guam National Guard has three missions. We have a federal mission, and that mission is to provide combat ready units to fight and win with uh, our nation's wars. And, and you've then done we, that. I've done that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, our other mission is our state mission. And uh, that's where we protect life, property, and preserve peace, order, and public safety. And we've done that, too. I've seen uh, at the intersections after the typhoons. Yes, yes. And then uh, the third mission, we have a community mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are obligated to provide support to the local programs that add value to this community. And and I think uh, not only me, but Mm -hmm. everyone in this room have performed those missions. And so... Uh, you know, we've, uh, and, and, you know, in military terms, yeah, we've chewed on the same public service ground uh, from from time to time, and, and uh, but there's it, it's so there is so much to that job, uh, and one of the things that I've I've found uh, that that has become a priority, and I know this from fact, you know, Mana, my sister, is married to, uh, yes. has got, you know, Phil is uh, is a uniform wearing guy, and and so I'm familiar with uh, with a lot of the sacrifices, you know, so there's there's two ways that I've always tried to be a part or or to to ingratiate myself into that community. Uh, and one of them is uh, is to just be a, a supportive of uh, of my brother in law and you know in the deployment and in his missions uh, and my and my sister and help out with uh, with these with the family units the family support right uh, there's a, what's the name of the organization that the you guys family readiness, readiness group. family readiness group so so helping out it's yeah I love them and I can't remember the name of the group but it's, it's just <laughs> it's just natural hey we got a fundraiser you know over at uh, at venue okay I'm there right uh, so so I want to always support that plus the employer support of, uh, of the garden reserve and Absolutely, I've been I've yes. been a fan of that for a long long time and uh, and help out every chance I get well thank you of you know your your efforts do not go unnoticed and I would tell you, Ray, you know, if I can buy gas, can I buy gas at the shop at now? Well, you know, how about uh, <laughs> see that? Uh, let's the, save that for another not discussion. That I'm requiring. Okay, can I go to the gym? That's can I can I use your gym? See you, that's see. And, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, about how I, I should have gotten started when I was eighteen, right? And 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 they, they sure. the guy from the from the uh, the recruiting office was calling me all the time until my mom answered the phone and chewed him out, so he stopped calling me. But I would have been I would have been out by now. I would have been like like Rod and and Dyron. I've been out. And you would have probably been the adjutant general imagine that <laughs> yeah i don't know about that but uh, I, I still still in all I'd, uh, it, the, i do it every once in a while i'll do that what if scenario and think about where i'd be right now and the answer is at the shop at or at the gym <laughs> <laughs> hanging right? hanging out right and uh, and doing all of that stuff but just a couple of the sidelines of uh, of of the organization so you uh, i there, there are always big shoes to fill. Uh, you know, filling in these these positions, being the new person in that job. Rod had it, uh, and he got it from uh, Major Benny, and Major Benny got it from uh, from Goldie, uh, and and so there's there's been this long progression. So what is it that what is it that you want to add now to that office? Well, you know, I I'd love to carry on the the wonderful heritage and tradition mm-hmm. that that our National Guard organization is so well known for. You know, it's a world class organization. A great organization to be in, uh, but what I'd like to bring forward, I'd like to bring forward some of Governor Leon Guerrero's initiatives, and uh, uh, we're looking at increasing diversity mm-hmm. and opportunities in the National Guard. Uh, you know, we we'd like to know that we are competitive. We'd like to know that uh, we remain relevant and uh, we we remain available for the governor in the event sh- she should need. Mm-hmm. Uh, support to community missions. Well, I think those are important. I think there's uh, certainly important goals. Are th- is there a lack of diversity in our guard? 
Oh, we we have diversity. I mean, yeah, yeah I was going to say, I, I, two, I've got two female guard members sure, here. One sure. of them is a general. Sure. sure. We have diversity, but uh, there's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. You know, we could always increase it. And, and I think we, we have a broad, spe- a broad spectrum of which to look at and mm-hmm. tap on. And uh, one of my passions, Ray, is talent management. You know, we, we, are, we are coming of age. Uh, we are in the information age. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you don't adjust to change, you know, you could be left behind. And uh, I, I think it's a fresh perspective to tap on talent management. You know, look at the people who have the skill sets mm-hmm. to bring us forward. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's probably an uncharted territory, but, but I feel it's well worth exploring. Uh, and so, so I, I'm sure that could fall under increasing diversity and also increasing opportunities mm-hmm. in the Guard so that we can give everyone an equal opportunity to serve. Are there more squadrons coming in? The, the, and, and, and forgive me again, I, I forgot to join the military, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to use the wrong words. But, you know, it's, it seems to me that before uh, there were uh, THAAD missiles as, a, as an example. Sure. I mean, it's, that's, the, that's our people that are, that are, are, are running the THAAD program on Guam Absolutely. now, right? Absolutely. Well, so, actually, and, they're not running the THAAD program. We're, running, we're going to be in charge of the Security Forces mission. So oh, I see. We're going to be the... the if you want to say the cops that are going to be protecting the THAAD. That's a, a 368 guys? Is it is that the No 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 it's the uh, battalion um, um, battalion unit that was just um, mobilized mm-hmm. So they're the ones that are going to be taking over the security forces mission. Three, I see. Three sixty-eight is uh, reserves. Reserves. Oh, yes, and and right. There's a, there's a bunch of different organizations in my head, and that's got to be the first thing. If I was ever to be the general, is is to try to figure out all of the different things that we do and the different uh, subcategories that we have uh, in the guard form sure. family that we have here on Guam. There's so many different missions out there. Uh, but but are there other when we talk about other technologies, other opportunities? Uh, it wasn't long ago that we weren't doing helicopter drills up at uh, at Radio Absolutely. Barragata, right? So, Absolutely. That came in about 2015. Our helicopters arrived. Mm-hmm. And, and just last year, we started performing the mission. And, and I think our our soldiers have been making a huge impact yeah. to the search and rescue mission. So and, and, and so that that's the question that I want to ask. You know, what are some of these other mission opportunities that are going to be coming up? What What is it that, that's on the desk right now? And you're looking at saying, yeah, that's going to be great for Guam. It'll be great for our region once we've once we've brought in enough people and trained them to, to be able to do some of these jobs. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're looking at opportunities with a uh, with Space Command. Mm. And uh, that that is great. We uh, you know, they're looking at Guam as a. Uh, as you know, you know we are in a strategic location, yes, and that is undeniable. Uh, and so, so we're looking at opportunities with Space Command uh, to see if Guam, uh, you know, can can contribute to the national strategy. To see, you know, how can we how can we protect our borders? Uh, and so, uh, Guam is definitely, uh, you know, a forerunner yeah. for that decision. And, and we're very excited. Can you, know, you, can to you know tell me about how we and how we are going to be Space Patrol? <laughs> well, it's not really. It's uh, so the air, the Air National Guard up up in, in Anderson, mm-hmm. our Guam Guard, we're petitioning. We were one of five uh, squadrons. So in the Air Guard, we call them squadrons. Okay. Uh, that was um, that is being considered to uh, to host one of the space control squadrons, uh, one of five around around the world. So um, we're hoping we uh, major or major. Uh, Lieutenant General Rice, he's our three-star director of the Air National Guard. He'll be here next month, and we're hoping he's going to provide. Can you bring him? Can, sure, can we, can, we, can very well, we can very well try to, to set that, that up. up. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because yes. it, it sounds... It, 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 we don't know if we're selected yet, but we're hoping that that's why he's coming. But, there, but there's so many... There's, uh, there's so, I mean, Trump was talking about putting together a space force here, and I was on the phone earlier today with uh, with uh, former Senator Ada, now the boss of the, of the Guam International Airport, and they are being courted there uh, to become a spaceport and the way that would work. And, and, and people still have not yet gotten the concept in... Uh, in we're not going to be launching satellite rockets right. from the Guam International Airport. What we're going to do is we're going to take a rocket, strap it to the belly of a 747, and then take that up to about 35,000 feet, and then we're going to fire the rocket off. So it doesn't have to It doesn't have to break the surly bonds of gravity down here. It'll, it should be a whole lot easier to shoot it straight across and uh, and put it, place it into orbit from there. That's the idea behind this. And now you're telling me that there is there is going to be an air guard component uh, that, uh, that Well, could, we're, hoping. we're hoping. Like I said, we were one of five selected and and uh, uh, last year they've been they were doing some uh, site inspections yeah. and uh, so we're hoping we're we're definitely crossing our fingers because that's a whole new that's a future that that definitely our our younger airmen can can. 
But what are we going to do? <laughs> what are... we, we would be similar to, remember, we had the NASA tracking station. It would be similar when to we were, that. Yeah, when all of us were little kids, yeah. Sure. Right. So as, as we evolve in space, uh, you know, we want to be involved in that. So a lot of our airmen that are into um, computers and, you know, the different yeah. technologies, we're hoping to get them involved. So we're crossing our fingers because that's an 88 uh, personnel squadron. So that would definitely help grow the air guard. And and that was more to the point of the question that I was asking. Are, are there going to be openings in the in the guard soon so you can you get more talent to manage? Opportunities, mm -hmm. talent management. And then so so we've got the sexy space command thing, but there's still other uh, other work that needs to get done. And and as I mentioned, the three six eight, I had, a, had an opportunity once a time once upon a time to go hang out with those guys in Okinawa and in Tokyo. And 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 I'm sure that you've seen this as well in uh, in your travels and and in your deployment uh, is you start talking to base commanders and, and and guys that are running things, and they love it when the Guam guys and girls come out. Absolutely, because there, there is a certain sense of half a day. There's a certain you know it's all the island guys. Number one, all the island guys get together. They're all just like we can see each other and we know what we're cooking and we know what we're barbecuing and who's bringing the paper products and who's bringing the meat and who's actually going to be cooking it. It will always be the Chamorro guys, by the way, that will be doing <laughs> yeah, the cooking. And the, yes. And the bar yes, yes, right? Uh, and, and so they, they all get together. But uh, but I, I remember I was in in Japan. I was talking to uh, one of the base commander's wives, and, uh, and she was remarking about how she liked to get onto the base because there was – it wasn't just, you know, a guy saluting at the, at the front – they put a little bit of a half of spirit in, in generally everything that they did. And, and the, so our men and women welcomed on the base. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So with it just more of uh, more of those kinds of things and more opportunities uh, to get them out there and, uh, and deployed. So tell me a little bit about your background. How did, how did you get into, into this game? Well, so um, my story, you know, my dad was in the Air Force and uh, I always admired a person in uniform. Mm. I always wanted to be like him. Yeah. I just wanted to be like my dad. And and uh, and so I did everything I could uh, to be just like him. Um, and so I ROTC? Told him, did you do uh, No, ROTC? as a matter of fact, no. So um, soon, just not too, not too uh, long after I graduated from high school, mm. I, I announced that I was interested in uh, joining the military. I thought I was going to get pushback. But instead, I I I, uh, I, re I received favorable uh, re you know responses mm -hmm. from both my my parents, uh, but there was conditions. Uh, you got to get a college degree, and after the college degree, you can go. But in, you know, depending on who you sign up with, they'll get you into college. Uh, right. So this is what got me into trouble. So I didn't <laughs> know. So at that, you know, you're in high school, you don't, you're having fun. So I didn't know that Father Duenas was only for guys. Oh. Yes, I didn't know that. So uh, entering uh, ninth grade, mm -hmm. I actually asked my dad, I want to go to Father Duenas, and he was trying to explain to me, <laughs> uh, we can't do that because uh, that school's only for boys. And the I only said, time, it, Father Duenas, the only time that, w that girls were allowed in the classroom was uh, was summer school. <laughs> and, uh, and and I know this because I attended summer school every year when I was at Father Duenas. But. Yeah. So uh, after that question, he said, no, you can't go there because it's, you know, it's only for mm -hmm. boys. And I said, mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? I can I can still I can still go with the boys. There's right. nothing wrong with that. And uh, I think uh, I think from that day forward, he said I, I need to keep tabs on you because uh, I can't I can't let you I can't let my eyes off of you because you might do things that I'm not aware of. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the restrictions, okay, you can't do that until you're done. You need to get a college degree. So I got my college degree and then I joined the Air Force Reserve. Right. Yeah, so cuz at that time, you know, I got the job to teach and but I still wanted to be in the military and I said Shoot, why can't I do both? Mm -hmm. And I did both. And I did both for, for a while. Yeah. And then um, an opportunity came up to go transfer into the Air National Guard. So I did. I um, went across the street mm -hmm. and um, went there and met everyone. And then I, I left as the first female sergeant of the Air National Guard. Okay. And I believe I, I still am the yes, only first sergeant. First sergeant oh, really? Female first sergeant female from first the Air sergeant. National Guard. That's a big deal. It's a big distinction. Well, it's great. It was one of the the best jobs I've ever had. You know, I. How many doors opened as a result of that? Many. See, that's the that's the many. thing is you know especially you get some of these kids and they they think in, in very clear straight lines about what their options are in the military. Sure. Uh, but you know you put something into it and you put some effort into it and distinguish yourself in a couple of places and uh, and then pretty soon people start looking at you and saying that that Aggie girl she's got it going on. Yeah, pretty much. I, you know I, I didn't I was I was colorblind uh -huh. and I was rank blind and I was gender blind. 
I, I didn't know uh, that there was a difference. Mm -hmm. All I knew was that there was a, there was a mission to perform, yeah. and I wanted to do this mission, and I wanted to help. And uh, as a result of being in the Air National Guard, uh, there uh, I didn't know that there was a sister uh, company to that, and mm -hmm. that was the Army National Guard. And uh, it was General Polino. Yeah. Major General Benny Polino uh, had a had a, uh, a a campaign platform to fill some severe shortages with our officers in the Army National Guard, and uh, he looked for everyone who had a degree, and I was on that list. Yep. And uh, he asked me to come see him and uh, said, "Hey, how would you like to transfer from the Air National Guard to the Army National Guard?" And when you're looking at a two-star general, mm -hmm. and he's asking you, "How would you like it?" My answer to him was, General, I would love nothing more than to transfer from the Air National Guard to the Army National sure. Guard. And I said it with a lot of zest mm -hmm. and enthusiasm. Eight months later, I uh, got a direct commission, and I went from an enlisted mm -hmm. soldier, uh, enlisted airman, into uh, a commissioned officer. And so what rank did they give you on the way in? It was a second lieutenant. Nice. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just so you from did, the bottom. Pro progression. From the bottom. So, so yes, it's like, you know, gender blind and uh, and and uh, service blind as sure. well. I mean, as there was a mission to be done, and and there was a mission that, that you could have fulfilled under General Benny Polino yes. as uh, as a lieutenant uh, yes. in the Air Na in the Guam National Guard, sure. Army Guard. Yes. Okay. All right. So if I get, uh, want to make sure I've got all of that stuff yes. right, uh, and and so uh, there there are obviously more opportunities that opened up again after yes. that. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, performing, uh, I was this aide de camp, so mm -hmm. I got to carry his briefcase and I got to run around with him. And I just, I tell you, you know, you know, Ray, when you hold the briefcase or anything that belongs to a general officer, there, there's just something that overcomes you. You become this different person. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I can't, I can't wait till, till I can, you know, I can see the, you know, the looks, benefits of. But I got to tell you, I mean, that, that culture, and if there might be people like, the, you know, me, lifelong civilians where I'm going, I, I, I see it, but I don't really get it. I mean, that's a, just a guy. It's the, you know, and, and I've been criticized many times for referring to General Goldhorn as Goldie, but that's because that's how I knew him at the Rotary Club, sure, right? Sure, sure. But if I say that, uh, and I, boy, I'd say that at uh, at the guard uh, headquarters, and people would look at me like I said a curse word. What? No, you call him general. I said I did call him general when I saw him. I said, "Hi, general." And then after that, it's just Goldie, right? Sure, but see, you can do that. I can do that. You I can, can do, do that. that. Yeah, sure, sure. So you know, the military is very disciplined, mm. and, and we're disciplined to to recognize and to respect the rank. Major Joe, is that correct? That is very correct. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> so you know, you you not many people get very many opportunities to be in the presence of the general. Mm -hmm. And so when you have the opportunity to do that, uh, the world the world is good. You know, Rod and I were classmates, right? <laughs> <laughs> general Rod and I were classmates. So I, it's, it's like, yeah, okay, big deal, he's a, he's a general. Uh, I'm, I'm just playing around, Rod. I, you know, you and, uh, and Dyer and the guys that, uh, that I, Mark Calvo, et cetera, a bunch of guys that, uh, that we, you know, went to school with. And I just, the, 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 the degree to which they've distinguished themselves with all of those opportunities is, is exciting. What's your advice to young ladies that, uh, that might be in college right now or, or thinking about you know, graduating from high school? You know, what, what's your advice to them? It's okay to color outside of the box. Mm. It's words to live by. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just uh, take a look and see uh, how it's being done in other places, and then don't do that. Do it your own way. Absolutely. So is there is there anything that you've done in uh, in the military, in your service in the military, that, uh, that was made easier because you were a kid from Guam? Everything. Yeah? Everything I did was, was made easier uh, from just... Growing up, uh, you know, being a Southern girl, mm -hmm. you know, that adds a little more, a little more restrictions and a little more respect uh, to everything you do. You see things differently. Um, and then, of course, growing up in Guam, you know, we, we've got we've got island pride. Yeah. And so, you know, the idea is 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 uh, profound. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably why anywhere you see a Guam soldier, a Guam airman, anyone from Guam, uh, we resonate. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a we have a very good reputation no matter where we go in the world. Well, any any two or three, and any. you've been around the round world, haven't you? I've been around. Yeah, a little bit. So tell sure. me about some of the deployments that you've been on. Uh, I've been to Afghanistan, uh, and then uh, I had a, uh, it was a, an exercise in the Philippines, mm -hmm. uh, but both were just as equally exciting and worthwhile mm -hmm. because you know I I believe that you know we're not here for ourselves, Ray. We're actually here to help someone else. 
you know, and some, there's a, there, there are certain people in the community and in, in the population in the United States that say, we, may, we, maybe we need to not be so worried about other people and some of the problems that they go through. We've got our own issues that we've got to, we've got to muddle through as, uh, as well in, uh, in, in the United States of America and maybe even, even Guam. So uh, if they've got problems if, in Afghanistan, maybe the Afghanis need to solve, resolve those issues on their own. Sure. However, you know, uh, you, what they do, in, you don't get into the politics well, of it. Well, what they do there uh, has an effect on what we do here. Mm. And so, you know, we uh, world peace is something is an idea that everyone aspires for. And uh, what a wonderful world it would be if we could have world peace. But, you know, we have to start with ourselves. Well, we have to. I, I think you project peace by being strong. Absolutely. And and so we maintain, you know, strength and and a depth of talent and and the ability to be able to uh, defend ourselves and, and, if necessary, go after some bad guys. Uh, and, and we've certainly seen some of those opportunities. You know, they're talking about uh, pulling out of Afghanistan. I guess that's uh, the decision has been made and it uh, looks like Syria is going to be on their own. Uh, does does that mean that there will be? I mean, I, I don't know specifically when and where and all of that, but to the degree that uh, uh, that there might be some some uh, pulling back, if you will, on some of these conflict areas that we are involved in, uh, does that does that change the number of people that can join your mission at the guard? Actually, I, I believe uh, it actually increases our responsibilities. Mm. Absolutely, and maybe uh, Major Joe Blas can talk a little bit about that. Uh, I know we're growing. Yeah, we've definitely grown uh, from the time I came. Because I was always kind of worried about that. You know, when sure. when we were in the, in the Gulf Wars and all of this stuff, and uh, we got to go get Osama bin Laden, and I'm I'm thinking at some point uh, we're we're there we're going to win all of these different war lets sure. that that we're in, and, uh, and then you know they'll go back to uh, relying more on on regular and uh, uh, regular uh, uh, I want to say enlisted soldiers versus uh, the uh, the Guard and Reservists that we have. So one of our primary missions, and then I'll let uh, Major Blas step in, is, you know, uh, we, we want to be fit to fight, mm -hmm. and we want to be ready to fight tonight. So readiness is a huge, a huge effort uh, we put forward. You know, we have to be physically, mentally, and emotionally ready. Uh, to protect and preserve peace. Well, I, I see the convoys all the time. I certainly see the convoys, but uh, but uh, on the, on the point of uh, you know the ramping down, if you will, of of certain hostilities around the around the planet, does that does that change the makeup of uh, or, or the personnel needs of uh, the Guard and Reserve here? I think the ramping down in the in the Middle East has just increased the ramping up in our area. Uh -huh. So our area has become like uh, like uh, uh, the tag said earlier. Um, it's become more relevant. So like with China and Russia and Korea, you know, we're still keeping an our, our eye on that. So we've become, this area has become more relevant. And, um, uh, well, just the first chain of islands between, uh, between China and the Philippines absolutely. and Vietnam so, and the potential so for conflict a, there is Right, there's a lot of talk about ramping up here rather than ramping down. So we're, we've, been, we've been trying to get our foot in the door mm -hmm. on everything uh, when it comes to ramping up because we want the guard to be right there in the mix with everything. So well, tip of the spear for sure. Tip of the spear, um, you know, and, and that's what brought about this uh, possible space control squadron mm -hmm. mission. Uh, you know, here, Hawaii, Alaska... We're ramping up because this is now um, uh, the highlight of, you know, where everything is coming. Yeah. So even if we're ramping down there, I don't think we're going to slow down here at all. In fact... Uh, lately, our missions have been increasing, so I, I don't think we're. Going to I, you know, out. I kind of have noticed that. I have I've have noticed that as well. A couple of other thoughts while I while I've got you, and as I say, I, I recognize that you've got a couple of things to take care of today. Uh, Congresswoman Madeline Z. Berdalio, in the 16 years that she was in Washington D.C. Uh, as our delegate, it seemed to me that she had a soft, soft spot in her heart uh, for the for the Guard and the Reserve here on Guam. And we're in a transitional phase, and she's going to continue to be uh, a, a, f a figure in Washington D.C. Though as the lead liaison for the governor's office. Uh, but have you had an opportunity to talk to your new delegate in, uh, in Washington, D.C. to uh, learn about uh, different ways that they might be able to, to help you? Not yet? We have not yet. not yet, but, you know, we look forward to doing that because, like you I said... I mean, he's not in the Armed Services Committee, but, you know, he's still the guy in D.C. He's still who's the guy in D.C. help carry the water for yes, the guard. Yes, uh, Congresswoman Berdalio, in, in her, her time as, uh, as our delegate, just helped the guard grow. I mean, when they used to bring the Codells to Guam, mm -hmm. they would talk about how great our facilities look and, and some of their facilities were like t since the 1600s. Yeah, well, I, I drive by your facility all the time. It seems like you're all, you know, in the last couple of years, you guys have been adding to it and adding to it. She's I mean, it's been, been, she's, she was a great advocate. In fact, uh, on Monday, we're going to be cutting the ribbon mm -hmm. um, on our newest facility to support our aviation mission. Where's that going to be at? It's going to be, um, so if you're looking at our facility, it's going to be, you, you probably can't see, see it, it not, not from the road. How about if I'm on uh, radio? 
on the radio bar regatta side. Close uh, to the reserves, you could see it. It's the building to the left. Okay. Yeah, yes. and yeah I'll, I'll, I'll if be If you're at the gas station, it's it's far in the back. It's it's behind our CSMS, which is our largest facility there. But you can't really see it, but that's where our, our, our well, You can give me a tour. So what was your favorite your favorite thing? I mean, in, in all of the years that you've been in the in the service, have you decided that, you know, you, you look back and everything, you go, this was the best time when I was uh, when I was a blank in the blank. Oh, gosh, there's so many, Ray. I, I have 33 years of military experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I can tell you, uh, each one, whether it was, you know... Uh, uh, I mean, even Afghanistan? Deployment even Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Actually, deployment was 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 actually a high, one of the highlights. Um, reason for that mm -hmm. is because you actually are able to apply all the training that you have been performing throughout the years to your real mission. Did anybody ever shoot at you? No. Okay. Did you ever shoot at anybody? No. Really? Really. So my MOS doesn't allow me to do that. So I can, I can You're see. You're not a chaplain. I, I can see the bad guys, but the you bad can guys see can't see me. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So, it, it, so we, uh, it's always, always kind of interesting to, to think about, uh, you know, how you would react and uh, what it would be like for you if, uh, if you were deployed far, far away or nearby. Uh, you know what? Uh, I want to say we, we sent folks uh, from the guard up to Saipan, right? We did. we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then there's all these other nearby missions that we have. Uh, and one of my favorite ones, and uh, and I remember it was August last year that you and I were talking. I said, is anybody going to be going out to uh, to Korea? And I guess they, they held off on uh, on the war games they were doing because we were starting to, to make nice with the North Koreans. That's correct. We did go out to Korea, but it was strictly uh, training, mm -hmm. and we didn't really do any exercises out there. So... Uh, but we were there. Right, right. Uh, and we'll continue to be there. But, you know, of course, we're going to follow the guidance of our commander in chief, uh, um, the leadership up in Washington to just to do what we need to do to perform our mission to help the overall good. Right. Uh, there was a question from uh, from a listener who wanted to know how you jumped from lieutenant colonel to uh, to a general, and uh, and you had a brief explanation about how that's possible. Sure. So uh, it, it's it's basically the title, Ray, uh, and the title is the adjutant general, and uh, the lieutenant colonel is the rank. So 10 Guam code annotated uh, allows the commander in chief mm -hmm. to uh, to select, you know, the the best candidate to lead the national guard. And so, uh, you know, the minimal qualifications are uh, lieutenant colonel, okay. who is promotable. That's you. And that's me. And so, you know, promotable uh, d defined is uh, if you have the time and grade, uh, the number of years you've been a lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, the law allows the governor to uh, to have a, 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 a range of selections. Uh, because sometimes if you limit uh, the governor's selection, it, it will tr it will defeat the purpose or be counterproductive to how she wants to move forward with, with the National Guard. So one of the other first things that you're going to have to do here is to fill the hole that you just vacated. Yes. I mean, you're, you're talent management. You have talent to find somebody to replace you sure. uh, in the role that you had. Absolutely. Well, uh, luckily, we have a huge pool of talent management in the Guam National Guard. I've heard. Huge pool. And so uh, we, we have outstanding airmen, outstanding soldiers, uh, outstanding civilians. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, we couldn't do it all without the support of our families and our employers. And I can tell you, I, uh, you know, we owe a depth of gratitude to the commander-in-chief, Governor Leon Guerrero, in, uh, you know, in her effort, you know, she she's passionate about the National Guard. Well, um, as, as from the, the Bank of Guam, and they've consistently won awards at uh, at the uh, our, the ESGR, oh, yes, and uh, and then of course now as as the government of Guam, which has also won some of the significant awards and recognition for their support of the Guard and Reserve. I don't see that changing anytime soon, no, just because we've got a, we've got a different governor. I think, yes. uh, in fact, uh, it's possible that, that some of the some of the work that gets done to help support uh, so many of the men and women in the Guard and Reserve that are also government of Guam employees. I think maybe we'll see uh, maybe an uptick in uh, in some of the kind of support that gets out there. Absolutely. And as long as we support her initiatives to uh, promote integrity, trust and, and honesty mm -hmm. in the National Guard, I think we'll be on good footing. No uh, words to live by. Look, if it works for her, it works for you. And the, and the last thing here from uh, for Facebook Live is from a girl named Chalorna Loran, General Agagi, my former volleyball coach. Well, half a day. How are you? <laughs> so is it now? Can we will there be a, a volleyball team now? And now there will. Now there will be right. <laughs> now there will be at the Garden Reserve. We'll have the uh, we'll have the uh, the Army take on the Air Force, and we'll we'll exchange. What are the tag games coming up? We don't have anything planned right now. But, right. But I think 
I think we can get something Come in on, motion. Come crazy fun. There's always the 5K. That's one of the things yes. I look forward to. Is it's a 5K, uh, and it's a great opportunity for members of the civilian community uh, to run with members of the, of the Guard and Reserve. And the way they do it is, uh, in my recollection, is you've got you've got the Army guys, and sometimes the Army guys are the ones that plan it, and sometimes it's the Air Force guys uh, that, are one, that, are, that are the ones to plan it. So so I've always seen the distinction is, is the Army guys will pick the hardest route, uh, and and they'll make you, it's, it's a hill there, let's run it, get up there, because they're they're built for torque is the is the idea uh and then if it's you can always tell when it when it was organized by the air guard because everywhere you go there's a two-hole punch there's there's some kind of a two-hole punch and a stapler and everything is it, wow. there's, yeah there's the, the record keeping that you guys don't like dude it's just a 5k it's all right no you have to sign this it has to be legal i'm going to take this to the general and get a signature on this as well you know, we got to get the guys in supply here to issue your bib. Wow, I, I know whose side you're on now. Right? <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> but ask them who won the last tag cup. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying. So we'll see what happens next time around 938 in the morning. General, congratulations. It's great to have you in the studio, and I, I'm really, really proud. The honor is mine. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. And, uh, and Major Joseph, we'll see you in, uh, at one of the 5Ks this weekend, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Well, not this weekend. We have drill this weekend. So we'll be playing up in Anderson and yes. wherever else we're running around, but um, right. in the upcoming ones. Definitely. In the upcoming, okay, because I was going to say, this one's down at uh, Marshall Sablon in, uh, in Agate, which means Pop's Bakery afterwards. That's, I know, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's in 9.38 in the morning. That's iConnect. I'm swing by the nearest iConnect and learn about 2019, all the great things that they've got in store for you. Push to talk and mobile and internet plans that you're not going to believe. Call 888-8888. Cheers to 80 years. It's our 80th anniversary and the gifts are on us. 80 gift certificates, 8 shopping sprees, 8 staycations, and 1 round trip flyaway for 2 to Manila. So how do you enter? Cavill's Insurance personal home and auto customers are automatically entered. non cavos customers may enter by receiving a qualified quote. It's our way of saying thank you for trusting us for the past 80 years. For more details, visit cavos.com slash giveaway or call 472-6816. Cavill's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Uh, 20 away from 9 o'clock in the morning. And before she leaves, a note here from my buddy Steve Reuter, uh, who is uh, one of the guys, one of the other influencers in the United Guam International Marathon that's going to be coming up. And, uh, and he says, uh, Major Bloss and, uh, and the tag are runners. Please ask if they're signed up for the marathons. Have you have you gotten yours done yet? We are now. You well no you actually got to go in and sign up. Okay, because I signed up already. You did sign up. Okay, so did you get the personalized bib? I did. And it says it says it was says Joe Patrick because it's uh, I push my son yes. when I run. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's the both of you. Yes. So that's the big deal. Is the price is going up at midnight tonight, and you get to personalize your uh, your bib. Then that's a priority for me today. All right, so she's going to become a she's a, and maybe the bib is going to be tag or something like that. Uh, but thanks for pointing that out, Steve. Twenty away from and uh, you know what they're doing over at Wendy's these days is going to knock you down. Spaghetti. I had some. Last, I had the meal version of it last night, and I, and I got to tell you, I know how to cook spaghetti. I like to think that I'm a pretty good spaghetti guy. You know, leave the sauce in all day long and put all kinds of different flavors into it, uh, and uh, and they beat me. They they they've totally got me in a box on this one. And you ought to try it out too. If you're a big spaghetti fan, uh, then then definitely try it. Six forty nine, you can't go wrong. That's the dinner size. I get a snack size for uh, for three forty nine. Uh, zesty sauce and great seasoned ground beef, and uh, and then of course you've got the pasta noodles in there. Really, really is good, and they should start serving in about twenty minutes. So try it today. Introducing Exchanged, Guam's first online and mobile remittance to the Philippines. Exchanged is the easiest and fastest way to send money to your family and friends anywhere in the Philippines. Download the Exchanged app or visit their website, exchange.me. Sign up, remit, and get a chance to win a trip for two to Manila. Deluxe accommodations at the Belmont Hotel at Resorts World Manila. So sign up and remit now at Exchanged. Promo ends March 2nd, 2019. Conditions apply. Also available at Exchange Dollar to Remit promo. Visit exchange.me for details. Soldiers, Army women in the, well, actually, uh, Army and an Air Force. Was uh, was the way that works. Congratulations to uh, the, the new tag, uh, General Esther Agagi. Uh, and uh, and uh, you got something you want me to talk about? 888-255-888-888-888-T A L K. In the waning minutes of uh, of the program here, it's 9:32, and uh, yes, there were selfies taken and. Uh, da -da -da -da.
All right. Uh, looking to see if there's anything else on uh, on the phone that I need to attend to. And the answer there is uh, is no. What a day. What a day. You know what? It, this is this is one of those weird things where I wake up in the morning and uh, I'm brushing my teeth because I do that every day, right? Uh, and I was going to say shave my face, but I haven't done that in a, in a couple of months now. But I, I go, I wonder what I'm going to talk about today. I wonder what we're going to do that's going to kill, I mean, fill <laughs> four hours of, uh, of the FM radio band. And every day uh, something pops up that, uh, that is interesting, up to and including there's uh, a new boss over at the shop at the, uh, at the guard. And, uh, and it's a lady. In, uh, in keeping, I think, with a lot of appointments that are being made uh, in, uh, in this new government, in this new time that, uh, that we're in. And, uh, and I've uh, got my fingers crossed that it will all uh, turn out to be good for everybody, uh, men and women in this town. 9.42 in the morning. Uh, there were a few other things that, uh, that were kind of notable. What have I been able to get to this morning? A, uh, a conversation. Uh, with Dr. Claire Claire Ruane uh, at the University of Guam on the perception of corruption on Guam, and I, I, I urge you to, to read the thing. And I, uh, let me see if I can uh, put the uh, put the link to it back up online on the Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Control C, and then we go over here, and then we put it over there, and then it's going to be Control V. I know, right? Uh, and and okay, so there's the link. Excuse me. That will take that. That was a Wendy's spaghetti burp that I just I, I just held it held in for a second there. Did you hear that pause? That was that was me holding in the burp of the spaghetti. It's like eating it again. Nine forty three. So anyway, there's the there's the link that'll take you to the uh, to the uh, the uh, results of the survey that they conducted. And unfortunately, uh, there is a um, there's a feeling in this town that yeah, there is corruption. Uh, we've we've got it. It's pretty high, and somebody needs to do something about it. Which is the other thing, and one of the other findings in uh, in this survey, is there are a lot of people that recognize that they might have witnessed one kind of corruption or, or another, but are waiting for somebody else to deal with it. Somebody else needs to address this corruption issue, uh, whether it's somebody in the medium, whether it's somebody in the in the government, uh, at the courts, uh, at the attorney general's office, at the U.S. attorney. Somebody <laughs> else has got to do it. And you go, well, why don't you do it? And the answer is, because I don't want to risk the retaliation. Uh, the uh, the effect of the retaliation that that you might suffer here on Guam if you expose some kind of corruption and embarrass somebody in in power. Uh, on the other hand, hey, this is radio. I, I, you know what? I want to be able to do that every day. Yeah, I've been here a couple of years, but I have uh, suddenly realized why many in media mm -hmm. don't point out corruption in government. Because at the rate they were all jumping off the ships like roaches <laughs> when this administration went uh. in. They're all booking for jobs, yeah, they, so they're not going to call anybody out on it. Yeah, well, there's, that's a that's an interesting perspective, and I wonder if there's anything to that. Me personally, uh, I've I've never really be look. I've uh, I've had politicians in my family, and you know this. I've had people that uh, uh, that uh, you know have uh, run for political office, been appointed to political office, have been hired by different governors uh, in uh, in the place. And, uh, yeah, there, there might be, I've seen some of the things that, that they've got to get through and, and endure in order, to, in order to keep their jobs. And sometimes I'm going, I don't want that. I don't think I need that. We have the other Governor Leon Guerrero on the phone. I think that title's going to stick, don't you? I hit already. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta do I gotta do that he 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 because it's funny to me. So we got two Governor Leon Guerreros. One is uh, Lou Leon Guerrero, uh, and the other one is uh, is Ken Leon Guerrero. We're talking about corruption. Do you think it's high on Guam, there, my friend? Well, look at the name of our organization, Guam Citizens for Public Accountability, which was started when people wanted me to stand up and speak out against corruption because they were afraid to because they worked for the government, their mother worked for the government, yeah. their husband worked for the government. So they all came up to me and started saying, oh, Mr. LG, c c could you say something about this? Oh, and, and that was the basis of our organization. But, and, and, and so, so but, but a good example, and, and a good example, and, and what's the first thing out of the mouths of the people uh, in, in power? When, uh, when you begin to criticize them, what's the first thing they do, Ken? They attack me. Right? So that's, yeah. And that's what people want to avoid here. That's what folks want to avoid is, I, you know what, I'll look at something and so-and-so uh, signed a lease uh, for a piece of CLTC property and knowing that it was a lease that would benefit uh, somebody in the first degree of, uh, of familial relationships. Now, in my mind, uh, what Mike did there was, was obviously corrupt.
Yes. In, 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 the, in the very least, he needed to step away from that. He needed to recuse himself. I'm sorry, I can't sign this document, regardless of what my position is and regardless of your position as an applicant, because you are a member of my family. So, so that meets the definition that Dr. Claire, Claire uh, Ruane gave me this morning. That is a kind of uh, misuse of the, of the policy for some kind of personal gain. And I'm sorry if you do something nice for a member of your family and uh, in, in a department or agency in the government of Guam, that, that's, that's, you, you cannot just say, well, I, I, it was policy. I could have done it, so I did do it. That's a member of the family. It's a first degree, and it's a benefit for everybody, and it should not have happened. Well, it's it's deep. It's even deeper than that. Well, no, it's gonna it's gonna get deeper than that because they're still toying with legislation over it uh, in the in the government of Guam that would uh, would would basically forgive all of those missteps. Yeah. It's we're we're going to say, yeah, it was it was bad before we found it, and uh, and so here's what we're going to do is uh, is moving forward. We promise to be good. And, but all of the other sins of the past, nobody is going to be held accountable. Nobody's going to be held responsible for any of that stuff. And, uh, and the, you know what? The taxpayers, the voters of Guam, you're just going to have to suck it up like you always do. Well, that may have been the feeling in the past, but I think these past two elections have shown that the voters of Guam are not just sucking it up anymore. Because think about it. In two election cycles, we've gotten rid of all the established political powers in the legislature in two election cycles. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, let me, let me think now. Uh, take the, we, I'd, I'd have to take a look at the, at all of the names of the people that were, were taken out in the 33rd Guam legislature that are, are back now. Uh, and, uh, and then the people that came out of the 34th Guam legislature, uh, who, uh, with, with only a couple of exceptions, I think Frank and Dennis are the only two that aren't working in the government right now. Well, they're not working in the government, but what I'm talking about is the the legislature controls the creation of policy in the pocketbook. So that's the first place the people of Guam need to pay attention. Mm. Uh, who's introducing what bill? Because once those bills are introduced, then the second layer of corruption takes place when appointed or non-appointed officials decide on how to interpret it. And I'll go back to the agriculture leases as an example. You know, there was a law, it was clearly defined, and then the Department of Agriculture got a wild hair up hmm. somewhere and decided we're going to interpret these leases differently than the law says. But because nobody was watching how they did it, 41 leases were issued. But when you look at what happened to those 41 leases, almost all of them are in violation of the intent of the law, but nobody called any of the officials on it. So it's maybe there's a believe in Camacho can do something about that. You send him all of that information? Well, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that because when we tried to bring these types of issues before the past attorney general, we were told basically – uh, the uh, government of Guam represents the, um, the attorney general's office represents the government. We're not going to entertain complaints from citizens, which was, you know, kind of like I, I couldn't believe it when we were getting that type of uh, feedback from the attorney general's office. So we'll see whether or not Levin is going to follow that well-worn path and represent the government against the people mm. or if he's going to represent the people who elected him. That's what we're going to be real interested to see what happens as this year unfolds. But going back to that report, the corruption begins. The highest level of corruption documented was the political parties. Yeah, I saw that. You go down. Yeah, I saw that. I thought that was. I thought that was an interesting take on that. Is who do we trust least? And uh, and unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we, it's it's all we've got. It's what we're stuck with. And and you guys uh, tried to break that mold with the write-in campaign six months ago. Uh, and uh, and and I, I got to tell you, I was delighted with the response. I mean, there's eight thousand write-ins uh, in this uh, in this last in the gubernatorial uh, the uh, general election here. I think that bodes well uh, for the conversation. For the that we still need to have about uh, about coming up with a third party solution. Well, that 8,000 is going to put the senators on notice when we try to reintroduce the bill to eliminate the primary election. Because the primary election is the tool that the parties use to control who gets to play the game. Yes. We eliminate the primary election 
then are then it becomes a more democratic process and more people will be willing to run for the legislature because you, you know i've been trying to get a lot of people to run for office and there's always two barriers one is the primary and i can't tell you how many good people have told me oh no the party won't approve me you know <laughs> Well, yeah, but in some cases, you know, the party is the party is stuck with you. But what they do with you afterwards uh, is uh, is a completely different story. You know, uh, they, they might have to take you in because you said you're a Republican. Uh, but uh, but you know what? Yeah, you can come to the rallies, but uh, uh, we're not going to let you speak. You got to you come to the rallies. We'll let you stand on the stage and uh, and clap uh, when our anointed candidates get to speak. But but you're not going to get to speak. In fact, could you do me a favor and and uh, and help the guy with the folding chairs afterwards? That would be a great big help because you're a big Republican guy. Well, if you look at the 33rd and the 34th, uh, the Republican Party went out of their way to ignore um, Mary Torres and James Espeldon in the 33rd and in the 34th election. Well, did you see? Well, do you remember what the uh, what the Republican minority did with uh, with Mary Torres? Yeah. I mean, this just like four weeks ago, five weeks ago, uh, when we were getting close to the inauguration, they had to pick the officers for the minority at the at the legislature. Mary Torres is the daughter of the first elected governor of Guam. Her brother was twice elected uh, governor of Guam, and they treat her like crap. And look at her vote. She was among the look at her vote getters. And look at her votes. So uh, there's there's something to be said about that. And and now now uh, what I'm what I'm going to call and uh, and people are going to say maybe I'm too nice to uh, to Mike Sinicholas, but I I'm, I think I'm going to call it the retribution tour that uh, that Mike Sinicholas is on right now. Mike Sinicholas can do no good in the eyes of some of the party seniors of the Democrat Party, and because they're still yeah. pissed off at him about not not writing his name on their unity pledge. Come yep. on, you have to, it's, it's like, you know, it's like little kids. I'll eat a bug if you eat a bug. And then everybody ate the bug and Mike said, well, I'm not eating a bug. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but we all did. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to eat a bug. What? Well, that's why this coming legislature, we're really looking forward because that 8,000 write-in votes was a very significant percentage. It was 25% of all votes cast. Right. Well, not to be fair, to be, uh, you know, the honest, the moral consistency here, not all of them were for Frank and Alicia. There were a few in there for me and Bob Klitschke. I know, but the whole point is <laughs> there were 25% of registered voters cast a write in for someone. Mm. There's, a, there, there's, there's a very a desire. strong mandate to go back to the legislature and push for eliminating the primary election because if they don't, the senators have seen how strong the public support would be for election reform. Yep. And our goal is if we don't get uh, election reform by the end of the first quarter, then this second quarter, we're going to start our village meetings and do a voter initiative. Uh, my, yeah, I uh, hold off. I, I'm waiting until after the first hundred days. But we talked about that yesterday, dude. I, you know what? I got I got to run. My producer Mike is uh, he's whip, cracking the whip on the break, so I got to I got to take the break. I'll, I'll talk to you pretty soon. All right. Have, a, have an incredible morning, 888 uh, And if you're on Facebook Live, click on the link that I just put up, and, uh, and you'll be able to download and read the, uh, the, the, the history of corruption on Guam, uh, or uh, at least somebody's uh, uh, feelings about whether it's good or bad or what, whatever it is I said it was. Find that at, uh, at the Facebook Live now, 955. Be right back. At Chili's, our burgers stack up with anyone's. Handcrafted to order, smashed to lock in flavor on a toasted brioche bun. Our burgers are all kinds of perfect. Choose from the Chili's Chili, the Mushroom Swiss, the Ultimate Bacon, or you know what? We dare you to take on the Boss Burger. Loaded with smoked brisket, rib meat, jalapeno cheddar sausage, and bacon. We may have really out ourselves. Our burgers are more than a handful, served with garlic dill pickles and fries. So hurry in today and enjoy our juicy, melty, yummy, handcrafted creations. Perfection between two buns. Chili's, more life happens here. Here at Make-A-Wish, our wish kids wish for all kinds of things. A lot of them involve traveling to faraway places. On Monday, February 18th from 6 until 10, we'll be holding an airline's mileage drive with me, Ray Gibson on 93.3 The Point, to help us grant these travel wishes. So if you've got spare airline miles, you can donate them without any transfer fees. Your donation will go a long way, and so will our wish kids. 
Yeah, see, everybody got an opinion on this Mike and Nicholas thing. Uh, Lady D says, Mike and Nicholas too busy kissing butts and following the snowflakes to work for uh, for Guam. I, I got to take a look at, uh, at what he wrote. So, like I said, everybody's got an opinion. And, uh, and in my mind, I think uh, he's still getting a ration of guff uh, from among the, uh, the the high command of the Democratic Party because you didn't sign the pledge. Only people that sign the pledge can be our friends. And and see what happens now. We got uh, we got Democrat one uh, one governor's office. Democrat ones. Lots of Democrats over at the, at the legislature, and they're all still ticked off at him. So uh, he's not going to be able to do anything anything right. He, he might actually you know uh, it might actually be capable of doing something decent for Guam uh, in that committee. Except he's surrounded by by nut jobs, which is the only point that I wanted to finish off in the conversation about uh, about having having the elimination of the primary and allowing for independents uh, to be able to go directly to the general election. Uh, they're they're by bypassing this this process of campaigning and spending and uh, and things like that. Uh, the only problem that I have is is it increases the potential for us to uh, to have more nut jobs show up on the uh, on the general election ballot. And uh, and when I say nut jobs, I, I think you can close your eyes right now and envision exactly the person that I'm thinking of. Uh, on the other hand, it's it's possible that when I say nut jobs, uh, there's there's two things going through your head. Maybe it's the I images of uh, of some of the people that that you think are nut jobs. Uh, might also be. But wait a second, Ray. Uh, some of those nut jobs are already at the legislature, so we, they don't need to be running in an independent party or in any kind of independent capacity. Oh well, you know we'll uh, maybe agree and disagree on on you know whether Mike and Nicholas is a, is a hero or whether he's a noob shaloob over in uh, in Congress. Uh, I suppose only time will tell. But the same way that we give the benefit of the doubt uh, to the administration and their appointees and uh, and nominees, then I think we ought to be generous with the benefit of the doubt for Levin Camacho and uh, and B.J. Cruz and Mike Sinicholas uh, in the new roles that uh, that they have got. Studio time, 9.59. That means I got a minute left before this show is done. Did I get to everything? Uh, talked about that. Talked about that. PUC meeting tonight. Yeah, talked about that. Uh, legislative first hearing. Talked about that. Chinese testing the missiles. Got to that. Uh, budget. Oh, did not get to the conversation about the uh, Department of Education's $343 million budget request for FY 2020. Uh, but if things are going the way they seem to be going now, my guess is that, uh, that even as conservative as the 343 looks, and probably still uh, is going to be the need for uh, for holding back. And uh, then then there's this one here. Don't if you are a SNAP member, if you got that Quest card in there, uh, the folks over at uh, at Public Health are saying you better conserve those funds because the March March is a gigantic question mark. You have the February money in there now, uh, and if you spend it all between now and uh, and the closing and subsequent reopening of the federal government, there may or may not be any money in those programs for you. So uh, so either get a job or conserve what you got. It's time for Fox News uh, news on KUSG Agania. Lisa Lacerra, Fox News. The blast of record cold killing several people in the Midwest and Plains, parts of the region colder than Antarctica. Fox's Steve Rappaport has more live. Lisa, 22 states recording sub-zero temperatures today with the wind chill in some areas hitting 60 below. Governors in three states issuing states of emergency, urging residents to stay indoors or risk death. Homeless populations are among the most vulnerable in this cold snap. The city of Chicago turning buses into mobile warming centers. Office of Emergency Management Executive Director Rich Guidus. Nobody should have to go cold throughout the night in Chicago. We have well over 200 facilities citywide. It's, if you're cold, you have somewhere to go. The National Weather Service says a wind chill of 25 below can freeze skin in 15 minutes. Lisa? Steve, the first meeting today is Republicans and Democrats had to work out a deal on board.